The following program is a Podcast One.com production. He started in a small town in Texas. Worked his ass off to become one of the most famous wrestlers of all time. We're going to take care of business tonight, and that's the bottom line. And now he's dominating the world of on-demand audio, and he's doing it for the working man. This is a damn good outlet for me to spew the bullshit off my brain. This is the Steve Austin Show, Unleashed. 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 All right, everybody, welcome to Steve Oz and Joe. I am coming to you from the mean streets of Los Angeles, California today. I'm sitting over here in my personal chair with my legs kicked up on an ottoman and my laptop computer in my lap. That's why they call it a laptop computer if you ain't figured it out yet. Goddamn, it's about the fourth time I did this open. Everything keeps going wrong from the lawn mowing guys to construction next door. Then my wife sends me a text message, can you come next door, pick out some interior lights, pick out some exterior lights, all kinds of bullshit. I go over there, we pick out the lights, I come back over here, try to start the podcast up. Hershey's in here with me, she's sleeping like a baby. All of a sudden, right in the middle of trying to get my goddamn open in, she goes and starts scratching on the door. She wants out. So I say, well, fuck it. So I hit the pause button, re-record the lines, and all of a sudden, she heard she's scratching on the outside of the door. She wants back in the room. God damn it, Hershey, make up your fucking mind. I love that dog. I rescued her when she was a year and a half old in Catula, Texas, down there South Texas, where I used to hunt with my buddy. And she is the greatest dog in the world. But you talk about a pain in the neck. And my buddy that I bought her from, he says, Steve, that dog is a pain in the ass because she just loves attention. Of course, y'all know me and her. She are thick as thieves. She hunts with me during deer season, goes everywhere with me, my Kawasaki mule. But God damn it, she is something else. Took her to the vet the other day. Get her a follow-up on her walking pneumonia visit. Took some more chest x-rays. And we went and saw an oncologist, a dog oncologist. Thought maybe she had a tumor in her lungs. Turns out, maybe her lung kind of uh, collapsed a little bit and maybe walled off an infection. So nonetheless, Hershey, my prized chocolate lab, is on another course of antibiotics to see if we can finally end this thing and get her all the way back to complete 100% healthy Hershey. I'll tell you what, I love that dog to death, but she is a pain in the ass. Hershey, come in here, you pain in the neck. She sleeps right at my feet on the bed. And last night, shit, not last night, every night for the last goddamn week. I ain't got no room in a king-size bed. Moolah's in the bed. Hershey's in the bed. My wife's over there on her side of the bed. She's almost about to fall off. I'm about to fall off. I done told my wife, I said, when we get the house next door, 316 Gimmick Street, remodeled, where we live, we're going to have to go to a mattress manufacturer and y'all heard about the california king size mattress fuck a california king i want a goddamn texas king the biggest goddamn i don't want a mattress shaped like texas i want the biggest goddamn mattress a motherfucker can make i want an andre the giant size mattress fuck a king size fuck a california king i want a goddamn global icon and a national treasure king mattress up in this motherfucker so finally Finally, after working my ass off all my goddamn life to pay my bills, I want to be able to lay down on my bed with a little bit of goddamn room with my wife, my dogs, my family, and get a good night's sleep without having to fight for every inch of real estate on that son of a bitch. But I digress. Shit. What else is going on? Let me tell you another little clusterfuck is going on over here. Moolah. Our silver lab, she's four years old, fixing to be four years old anyway. She got diarrhea. She's shitting like a crippled goose. God damn, I've seen some screaming shits before, but this some just takes the case. I don't know uh, what to fucking do. She's shitting so goddamn bad, it's unbelievable. So we got an appointment to go see the doctor. And man, I've been out there in the backyard 
Over here at 317 Gimmick Street, the little backyard we got, the house we're renting while the remodel on 316 is getting done. Little bitty ass backyard. Hell, that's Los Angeles for you. If she was shitting like a crippled goose at the Broken Skull Ranch, I'd still take her to the vet. But the chances would be less that I would be stepping in all that shit because we got a bigger damn yard. Anyway, Moolah's screaming like a goddamn... Anyway, Moolah's shitting like a crippled goose. We took her in to see the goddamn doctor and uh, give her some pills to take. And trying to give her her pills when we got down from the vet. And this morning, when she got up, and you can kayfabe that pill in a pile of dog food, kayfabe it some cheese, some cottage cheese, whatever, whatever you put it in, she'll sift through it in her mouth and then spit the pill out. That's how smart that little motherfucker is. Mula is smart. She's always been smart. I dare say she's a little smarter than Hershey. And it's hard to say that because Hershey's my baby. But goddamn, Mula is just smart. I guarantee if I gave her a calculator, she could probably come up with a formula that says E equals MC squared, just like Albert Einstein. That's how smart this dog is. So I got to be real creative in trying to get her a way to swallow a goddamn pill. A pill that's going to stop her up and heal her from shitting like a crippled goose. Because when a dog's got the screaming shits, you know, all over the goddamn backyard, I gotta go pull leaves off all the little trees back here. And luckily, we got a bunch of foliage here in the backyard. So I pull a bunch of leaves off, put them in the piles of shit. And my wife, my illustrious wife, Kristen, comes up with the magic answer. Well, why don't you just use the water hose and wash the shit into the ground? I said, honey, I done near... I said, honey, I've already thought about that. But have you ever seen the water hose in the back? I said, honey, I've already thought about that. But have you ever seen that water hose in the backyard? She goes, yeah, what about it? I said, that motherfucker's only 10 foot long. I'm fixing to load my ass up in my Ford Bronco, go down to Home Depot, and shit. That little yard back there is probably 20 yards deep and maybe 12 or 15 yards wide. Maybe. I'm going to get a goddamn 100-foot water hose so I can wash my goddamn neighbor's dog shit off their fucking yard. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to be able to wash the shit off the backyard, the front yard, the sides of the house, wherever the fuck I want to. And I'm going to get one of them handy-dandy super spray nozzles to wash all the shit off the blades of grass so that I walk on them and get fucking shit all over my shoes. It's easy to avoid the splatters that are coming out of Mula's ass. Hershey, on the other hand, as I was walking out there trying to cover up all of Mula's spray shits with leaves, sure enough, I stepped in another pile of Hershey shit, kayfabed up underneath them blades of grass, walked back in the house, tracked shit in the house, and my wife said, I thought you were going to use those sandals by the back door as your outdoor shoes. And I said, I was. I'm just too fucking stupid and lazy to put them on the bottom of my feet. You know you're lazy when you're too lazy to take off your existing flip-flops to put on your outdoor flip-flops. How easy is that? It ain't like unlacing a pair of tennis shoes, taking your socks off, and putting another set of damn flip-flops on. I'm just taking a pair of flip-flops off to put on another pair of flip-flops. But I figured, nah, nah, man, shit, as stealthy and as fleet-footed as I am, as athletic and agile as I am, I ain't gonna step on no dog shit. Well, I stepped right in the middle of a pile, and I paid the fucking price. While I was back there, I noticed the hummingbird feeders. Hummingbirds been flying in the backyard lately. I like hummingbirds. They're pretty. They're fun to look at. I never knew why they call them hummingbirds, because I ain't never once in all my 52 years of growing up heard a hummingbird hum a song. Hell, if I'd ever been out there in the backyard and shit, just a hummingbird out of blue, start humming kumbaya. So I looked it up on Wikipedia why the hummingbird, how the hummingbird got its name. The hummingbird don't hum songs. Hell, it got a beak on it, a bill, whatever you want to call it, for sucking out the nectar on them flowers or eating the juice out of a hummingbird feeder, the sugar water. The hummingbird got its name because it makes a humming sound because it beats its wings a goddamn fast. 
their hearts beat up to 2,000 beats a minute sometimes. The metabolism is through the roof. The only bird that can fly forwards, backwards, up, down, and backwards. Shit. The hummingbird's a handy mobile motherfucker. Got the fastest metabolism known to man other than an insect. I got all these facts off reading Wikipedia. I could throw some more hummingbird facts at you if I wanted to, but I don't. Fucking hummingbirds. I'm going to go to Home Depot, and while I get that 100-foot water hose with the handy-dandy super spray nozzle attachment on it, I'm going to go get some hummingbird feeders. And when I was reading all the facts about the hummingbirds, we filled up, well, I filled up the two existing ones back there, washed them all out, got the shit out of them, and put some of that damn red sugar water we got at the store yesterday in there. And Wikipedia says, or the hummingbird fact thing says, don't put the red dye in there. That's bad for them. Don't use uh, sweet and low. Don't use Splenda. Don't use equal. Use regular table sugar. Boil it for a cunt here and some water, and then mix it at a four to one ratio and put it in the goddamn hummingbird feeder. So, hummingbirds, shit, you just gotta figure they'd be lucky to get some sugar water. But they won't look a gift horse in the mouth, and now it's like me ordering a margarita over at the little club I belong to. It's just like a Broken Skull Ranch margarita. They want those motherfuckers made right. So, the sugar water is just like a Broken Skull Ranch margarita is to me. They're real picky. So I'm going to go out there to Home Depot. I'm going to buy me a couple of hummingbird feeders, boil some sugar water, fill those cocksuckers up, and just sit back in my backyard with my outdoor flip-flops on and watch the hummingbirds sip their sugar water because a goddamn fast metabolism requires them to eat so much. And when they go to sleep, here's one for you. When they go to sleep at night, they kind of go into a hibernation state to slow the caloric burn down. It's unbelievable. Hell, I figured if a hummingbird was big enough, I'd get a transfusion from some hummingbird blood into my system so I'd be so goddamn fat around the drum. If I had the metabolism of a goddamn hummingbird, shit, I'd be about 2% body fat. I told my wife, shit, that hummingbird water looks so good, maybe I'll drink some. Next thing you know, I'll be sitting in a limb of a tree back in the back, humming, flapping my wings, and fall out the goddamn tree onto the ground. My wife got to call 911. Here comes the fire department. The same fire department came over to the house a while ago because they thought my damn house is on fire because ADT said my house is on fire because the guy's doing a remodel done tripped off the smoke detectors. I said, well, what, what, what happened to him? Was he in the backyard trimming trees, working out here? No, he thought it was a hummingbird, was going to take off and fly south, and probably fell on the ground after flapping his arms at 100 miles an hour. Yeah, that's the kind of luck I'd have. Well, well, fuck it. Hey, man, that's enough of the bullshit that's going on over here at 317 Gimmick Street, and all the bullshit I said is true. Hershey's getting better. I owe you a beer because my phone went off. Hershey's getting better. We got her on another course of antibiotics for that long. Mula has the screaming shits. I'm trying to kayfabe her pills to get her goddamn well. She'd have made a shitty wrestler because I ain't never seen hardly any wrestlers had a hard time taking pills. Mula would have been the shits as a pro wrestler. So we're trying to get her well. I washed off the two hummingbird feeders out there. My wife made some red sugar water. We got it to the store the other day. I'm going to go buy two more hummingbird feeders. And if you go buy some hummingbird feeders, hummingbirds uh, like those feeders to be placed at a pretty good distance from the other feeder so that one bully hummingbird don't roost everybody out and try to claim both feeders. So if you do what I do and you're making your backyard or your front yard more hummingbird friendly, spread the feeders out so one bird doesn't dominate the whole cocksucker. Shit. The kind of tips, the kind of advice you get on this award-winning podcast that ain't never won shit are sometimes priceless. Fuck. My guest today is a guy named Tom Finn. I had never met Tom Finn until I started seeing his shit on Twitter and on his Instagram account, Huck Finn Barbell. Dude's out of Illinois. And how'd I meet this dude? Well, turns out a former friend of mine, my old training partner when I came to Los Angeles, we used to train at World Gym on Lincoln and Washington. Used to train our asses off. He's back in Illinois, moved back to stay with his parents and helped them out. And uh, hooked me up with this guy, crazy motherfucker. Check out Huck Finn Barbell on Instagram. 
He's funny as fuck. Strong as a motherfucker. Goddamn one of the strongest power levers in the United States of America. We're just going to shoot the breeze, talk shit, talk about Instagram, some of the stuff he's got going on. Yeah, hell, he's a security guard at a maximum, what do you call it, a maximum uh, risk security guard, whatever it is, maximum security prison. That's what he is. He's a prison guard over there. Funny as fuck. He's a big wrestling fan. Used to watch wrestling in his living room with his dad growing up out there in Illinois. And I uh, came by the house a couple of weeks ago. We chopped it up, shoot the shit about training heavy, doing stupid shit on Instagram. And he's my guest today. And he was out here in Los Angeles with a couple of his sponsors. And we shot the breeze over here. And that's a conversation you're going to hear over here. And today, uh, before we get into the podcast, I got to take care of some biznatch. And that biznatch is putting a little extra cash in your wallet because March Madness is coming up fast. And I know y'all are thinking about your brackets, and you're not the only ones. Bet DSI is going to have a million-dollar bracket contest, and they know that picking a perfect bracket is damn near impossible. So they're also adding guaranteed prizes for best over March Madness bracket performances. You ain't got to be perfect to win some cash. Bet DSI is also giving you free entry into this March Madness contest. Just register at BetDSI.com and use my promo code Austin25. That's my last name, Austin, and the number 25. And you ain't got to worry about playing at BetDSI. They've been in the business over 20 years and are the top-rated business on sportsbook review sites. they got great customer service available 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and right now, when you register at BetDSI and use my promo code Austin25, you'll get 25 bucks for free and a 200% bonus with your first deposit. BetDSI has live in-game wagering so you can make plays throughout the game. So yeah, you can bet on March Madness games while they're live and running. So get in on this action. Register at BetDSI.com and use my promo code Austin25. That's my last name, Austin, and the number 25 to get $25 free and a 200% bonus with your first deposit. That's betdsi.com and use the promo code Austin25. All right, it's March, which means it's time for the madness. And it's crunch time in the NBA. So you know we got it all covered on the big podcast with me, Shaq. And we're way more than just sports, Shaquille. So be prepared to laugh, folks, as we bring you the best basketball coverage, the biggest names in hoops, like Kevin Garnett, Chris Paul, Dick Vitale, Grant Hill, Chris Webber, and many, many more. The big podcast with Shaq. Check us out with new episodes every Monday at podcastone.com. This is Steve Austin Unleashed. All right, I'm sitting here with Tom Finn. We're here at 317 Gimmick Street. If there's some noise, it's because my wife is coming and going and leaving. The dogs are going crazy, and they're beating the shit out of my house next door. You hear them over at Tom? They're remodeling my crib. What's going on, Steve Austin? I hear everything, brother. I'm glad to hear you uh, over here. You was late getting here. I want to let you know right here, right now, you're the first guest to ever be late on my show. I feel like complete shit. Yeah, and I saw your damn uh, tweet you sent from Gold's Gym. You're training Jacks, trying to come here with some 21-inch guns and intimidate me. It didn't work. Aye. You're late. You owe me $20. I'll give you, you can 20. pay me after the podcast. I'll give you 20 push-ups right now. 20 push-ups right now? Yep. Uh, someone have to come hold your microphone. Keep the microphone. Stay right there. I know you'll do all these feats of strength. <laughs> what in the fuck are you doing out here in L.A.? Uh, well, we're supposed to be doing some feats of strength out here at Muscle Beach. I got a couple ideas up my head, and uh, the eight-man guys are filming me. Tell me about the eight-man guys. What is that? Eight-man strong is a clothing line that uh, sponsors me. Uh, we're out of Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. Um, they're really big in the powerlifting community. Helped me out a lot. And uh, they got great clothing, man. This is the only fucking shirts I ever wear. You didn't bring me an eight-man strong shirt? I got one right over there, a gray one. All right, I got you a Broken Skull Ranch hat. Oh, hell yeah. It's going to be a fair trade off here. <laughs> Fuck the push-ups, and I ain't going to throw you out the window either. Thank God. Hey, man, I've been looking on your uh, Instagram account, and if you look at uh, Tom on Instagram, it's Huck Finn Barbell, Huck, F-I-N-N, Barbell, and goddamn, you do some crazy-ass shit. Why? Do you, <laughs> you're 34 years old, right? Yes. Need, need something to do? You bored? Oh, I'm a prison guard. Like to have fun? Yeah, well, I'm a prison guard. I see a lot of, you know, stupid shit at work all the time. It's a very depressing place. Tell man. me about the, the kind of stupid shit you see working at a prison. Well, I'll tell you about my first day. It was uh, it's crazy. I walk in there. I'm in the north house of this uh, prison in Illinois. It's a max joint, Pontiac. I come in there. I walk the gallery. First guy I see is eating his own shit. 
Swear to God, true story. Guy's eating his own shit. You know, I walk back to the to where the lieutenant's office is. They're like, yeah, it's pretty quiet in here today, huh? I go, are you kidding me? Quiet? I saw a guy eating his own shit. This is quiet. I don't know want to know what, you know, not quiet is. Well, it was quiet. He was just quietly eating his shit. Yeah, that's, so, that might be true. Did, it, did you ever ask the guy why he was eating shit? I did not. Was he that hungry? He must have been. I don't know. I don't think these guys. How did you decide? Hey, man, could be a prison guard. I don't know. I did. Just decided uh, the job was open, and I was like, "Prison guard sounds like a decent job." Tell me about the training that goes into something like that, because it sounds like I mean that's a dangerous environment. Obviously, you got to know how to protect yourself. You having to be strong as fuck. Not everybody else is. So, what do you got to learn to be a prison guard? Well, you don't really got to learn months to be a prison guard. You just got to pass a couple tests. What about self-defense and stuff like that? They don't teach you all that? I mean, a couple of tricks of the trade? I mean, some sugar holes, some cheap shots, what? (laughs) A couple cheap shots, a chokehold, and that's about it. That's all you learn at the academy, you know? So how long was the academy? Six weeks. I went six weeks to the academy. They feed you dog shit. I snuck my own protein in, stuck my own protein bars in. You can't bring any of that in. Then competed that last week out of, you know, no sleep, no food, no nothing. Total 1,900 that Saturday. So, so why are they gonna feed you dog shit? I mean, it's I, state food. That... State food's bullshit, you know. Oh, okay. So what? They just getting you used to what you're gonna be through, or what? Yeah, you're gonna act like you're a prisoner. You know, this is what the prisoners eat. This is what you're gonna eat. Hey, man, Shawshank Redemption is one of my favorite movies of all time. I just watched that because of Karen the other day. Even when it comes on TV with the commercials, I got it on DVD, but I still watch the damn yeah. thing. Uh, and anything like that. Now, obviously, Andy Dufresne's not gonna, you know, tunnel through the wall. Uh, you know. In 16, whatever years it took him to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, do you ever get any breakout attempts up there? Well, uh, Is it, it's max security, right? Yeah. I mean, there's been uh, a couple I've heard of, but I can't really talk about. So. I got you. <laughs> we can talk about it after we hit yeah, the, yeah. the stop button on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but what, what is this? I mean, how many people in there? How many inmates? Um, I think there's about 1,200, maybe. 1,200 inmates. What about uh, you guys ever go in there and search the uh, the cells, look for shanks, all the stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's standard protocol. Standard protocols, you know, uh, cell searches. Uh, you find shanks all the time in there. There was uh, a shank they found last week. I was just in there. Some guy got shanked right in the face. Now, what are they making these things out of? Because they get real creative. Uh, t- toothbrushes, uh, nail clippers, um, fan blades. Fan blades is a big one. No stupid shit like that. Hey, you, well, let me see. You compete in powerlifting. Yep. You ain't been doing it that long. You've been lifting for a long time. Yeah. You haven't really been competing that long. So uh, I was watching one of your uh, podcasts with Mark Bell over at Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the west of Sacramento. And you start talking about C.T. Fletcher. C.T. Fletcher is a friend of mine. He's always talking about uh, prison training. Yeah. And, you know, just short, quick reps, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Tell me about there in the yard over there where you work. I mean, y'all got a, um, a, a weight sets, a bunch of weight sets for the inmates. Do they train, and, and how are they training over there? Well, you ever get a chance to check him out because you're a weight guy yourself? <laughs> oh, they're always hollering at me, you know. Hey, Finn, get over here. Show us what you got. Um, it's only the PC guys got yard. I'm in a max joint. The guys I'm with is in the north house. It's seg. They have nothing. So they're doing push-ups, sit-ups. They're filling their bags up with water and shit, doing curls with you know books, stupid shit like that, you know. When, when uh, you know, you, you're motivated because, you know, like to compete, you want to try to set some records, mm-hmm. get noticed, yeah. have success. What motivates these guys? I mean, is just time on their hands? Because I don't imagine that every prisoner comes in there as a fitness freak. They become, they do something, maybe it's out of boredom uh, or, or they need to be strong to survive. What the fuck? I assume it's out of boredom, probably. I, I have no idea with those, those guys. I mean, the guys that I, I, I'm with day in and day out in the North House, they're, uh, they're not all there, most of them. They're mass murderers. They're, you know, rapists, shit like that. So how do they know about you? I mean, uh, do they have access to the Internet? I mean, they see they see your exploits. I mean, they can see you're jacked up. You're yeah. probably wearing long sleeve shirts and stuff like that. Well, they that. call me Steve Austin when I get on the gallery. Hey, Stone Cold Steve Austin's on the gallery right now, you know. Dude, I was watching one of your videos. We'll go back to this. <laughs> but I was sitting there, you know, you, you look a little bit like me. But I was also thinking... If me and Rob Van Dam had a kid, because you got some good Van Dam kind of eyes and features, so a little bit like Rob Van Dam, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. and me. So it's almost about a 50 50 blend. So that's so a if you guys had a baby, right yeah, yeah. Goddamn, if, you know, I go in there whoop the, whoop some ass, he could do the martial arts stuff and the flying shit that he does. Yeah, yeah. Money. Hell yeah. 34 years old. You need to go down to WWE Performance Center right now. I'm telling you, they contacted me several times in the last eight months. Bullshit. Yeah, they, after the Arnold last year, they contacted me, gave me a date, May something. Then I tore my pec 
two weeks before. Then I didn't hear from them again for four months. They contacted me again. Okay, we got you, uh, you know, February 2nd through the 4th. There's another uh, blah, 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 whatever. Were you flying out of all the bullshit? Then I didn't hear from them again. That, that's... Well, you didn't take the plunge? You, you just torn a uh, pack or what? You didn't, you didn't take the plunge to take the flight and go down to the... Oh, they never even offered me a flight after that. Oh, okay. So, and then they, and when they recontacted me, I figured I, I was ready as, you know, let's go. I'm healthy. I'm ready to go. And then they never gave me a, you know, dates, nothing after that. Like, never contacted me like two months after that. So, man, 34, 34. I'm just fucking wasting time over as here, man. As far as a human being goes, I mean, dude, you're still a young cat. you got a bunch of good years yeah. left. As far as trying to get into the business of pro wrestling, you know, you might call it sports entertainment. I'll refer to it as pro wrestling. Yeah, man, all of a sudden, you look at trying to learn the business two years and eh, three years, and okay, then you're going to be ready to go. Maybe a year. They're really leaning on guys to come out of that performance center earlier than they need to be, but that's where the business is moving so fast. Your window of opportunity is starting to close. Well, when DDP come in? Was hey, he man, five, right? one of the hardest working guys yeah. I ever met in that business. And we used to travel together, me, Diamond Dallas Page, and Mick Foley. And Diamond Dallas Page was ahead of his time. He was one of those guys, he would bring a little video camera. He goes, bro, bro, that's Dallas. He always says, bro. Yeah. Dallas, if you say bro one more time, bro, can you hold my camera? Can you film my match? So we'd be over filming his match, me and Flying Brian. And we'd be doing color yeah. commentary like Gordon Sully. Anyway, we'd go to the hotel room. He'd hook up his camera, and then we'd pick his match. You know, tell him what he did right, what he did wrong, what he could improve upon. But, man, you know, he was a manager before, and then he got into the business and worked his ass off. So it could still happen. Yeah. Well, and I was in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's what I heard the other night. He got when I came out to Los Angeles, he had a condo in Playa Vista right down the road. He yeah. went, bro, bro, come on out, because I'd been retired from the business. Yeah. I was out for three years. I said, man, I got to get the fuck. I got to get another job. I got to do something. So I came out here. He goes, hey, you can live with me. You just pay me $1,000 a month for rent. Yeah. So I moved in with Dallas. Every morning when I got up, he'd be down there working on DDP yoga, DDP yoga. Yeah. And I'm like, what in the fuck are you doing with this yoga thing? He goes, bro. Bro, I'm telling you, one of these days it's going to hit. Yeah. It hit. It hit. So, Dallas, congratulations on going to the Hall of Fame, and congratulations on all the success you've made with DDP Yoga. Back to you. Diamond Cutter. Diamond Cutter. Okay, you did a diamond cutter on a dude in the gym the other day. Yes. I think he was wearing an Austin shirt, so it's supposed to be like a – you just done about a 40-inch vertical. Oh, yeah, yeah. What, what, what was that vertical? I jumped on a couple boxes up in the air. Yeah, but like pretty good height. It was. I can dunk a basketball. Yeah. You know, I'm 5'11 five, five on a good day. I can talk about, so anyways, I jumped up, hit that. The guy came in, shook my hand. Boom, diamond cutter. He laid out for it perfectly. Holy Good shit, move. hat went flying off. Oh, it was great. Hey, so when did you, I know you uh, rough and tumble household, uh, where you grew up with your dad. Your dad oh, got yeah. you into lifting weights. Y'all was lifting, Eighth watching grade. wrestling, shit like yep. that. So who'd you grow up watching? You're quite quite a bit younger than me. I'm not asking for a self-plug here, but what were y'all tuning into? WWF, uh, WCW, what was it? When it originally started, man, I was a huge Hulk Hogan fan for sure. Like yeah. when I was real young, Hulk Hogan all the way. Uh, and then it turned into the, you know, high school years or so. Stone Cold by far. I mean, obviously, if you look at all my stuff, Stone Cold's my hero. I'm sitting here talking to that son of a bitch right now. And uh, I didn't like The Rock. I didn't like any of those guys. Stone Cold's all day long. But you were doing a step across the gym, so you're obviously a Ric Flair fan. As I'm well. a huge Ric Flair fan, too. Yeah. Ric Flair, Woo! He's been, he's, to me, he's the greatest pro wrestler ever did. He's my favorite. Uh, so what did you like about the business back in the day? I liked, uh, I liked the ass kicking from you, man, and the, the beer drinking, the flicking off, the everything. I mean, I copied it. I copied it. I'm copying it right now while I'm powerlifting. I'm chugging beers. And I'm fucking doing a, a 1,900-pound total in less than 30 seconds while chugging your beer in between. Hey, I got a backstory for you. Okay, talk to people about what a 1,900-pound total is because a lot of my fans just come from the wrestling world. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a lot of people from bodybuilding and powerlifting as well, but powerlifting is the total of lifting three big lifts. Squat, Squat. bench, and deadlift. Okay, and then you add those up. So you did a 1,900-pound total. Now, this is well, a that, training session. This that, is not your best. That was at a 30, in 30 seconds. Right, in 30 seconds. So 1,900-pound yeah. total in 30 seconds. But from the, the word I heard was you came in there and you did your 1,900, and then you hauled ass. Yes. So you left a bunch of plates on the bars. 
Oh, Jesus. Yes, man. you did. Dan, you tell on me? Busted. Yeah. Son of a bitch. I can't do anything in that gym anymore. I'm like, I'm out of here. See you guys later. You Took left. me one minute. I'm out of there. See, here's the thing. You just got back from Gold's Gym, the Mecca. Yeah. And there's one thing. First time. You know, dude, as long as you've been a damn muscle head or yeah. power lift or whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it, grunting away in the gym, you know. Rule number one. Pick up your weights. Pick up your weights. Yeah. Rack your fucking plates. Put your dumbbells back on the rack. And it's one thing when some son of a bitch leaves 225 <laughs> or 315 on a flat bench. That, that, that's either four or six wheels. 700 pounds. When you're talking about 1,900 pounds on three bars, <laughs> that's a goddamn lot of work. Yeah. I think he was lying. No, no, him. no. You busted. I heard nah, you had some heat on you. Son of a bitch. Don't do it again, Tom. Won't happen again, Dan. Hey, where do you fly out of when you go to Aurora? When I go to Aurora? Yeah, I mean, I didn't know where the gym's based out of. The, yeah, the gym's based out of Aurora. So you flying out of Chicago, O'Hare? Where yeah, O'Hare. We, we, yeah, we fly out of O'Hare. How far is that? I don't know, 30 minutes. Okay. About well, 30 I minutes. just want to know because there's going to be a flight to LAX to O'Hare for me to drive 30 minutes to whip your ass. If you leave the oh, yeah. Your ass on the bargain. This is bullshit, man. <laughs> yeah. Dan, thank you for the heads up on that. Hey, don't rack you 1,900 pounds. Now, I can understand you leaving 1,500 laying around, yeah. but not 19. You're pushing the limits there. I am. Push my luck. I will fly down there. Well, I'm going to leave 1,900 pounds uh, on the bar again just to get you to fly down there and give me a stone-cold stunner. We're going to get back to the stunner, and we're going to talk about your regular workout schedule and nutrition. But first, we're going to help all the Steve Austin Show listeners with their nutrition, specifically your snacking choices. And that snacking solution is NatureBox.com. NatureBox makes snacks that actually taste great and are better for you. They're made with high-quality ingredients that don't have any artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners. And they got something for everyone. They got snacks like Nutty Power Clusters, Dried Mango, and Dark Chocolate Almonds. They also got gluten-free snacks and vegan snacks. And Nature Box recently improved their service. Now you can order as much as you want, as often as you want, with no minimum purchase required. And you can cancel any time. So go to naturebox.com slash Austin and check out their snacks catalog. There are over 100 snacks to choose from, and they're always adding new snacks as well. Just choose the ones you like, and they'll deliver them right to your door. And if you ever try a snack that you don't like, Naturebox will replace it for free. And right now, you'll save even more. Naturebox is offering 50% off your first order when you go to naturebox.com slash Austin. That's naturebox.com slash Austin for 50% off your first order. Naturebox.com slash Austin. Steve Austin. Steve Austin. Unleash. Unleash. Hey, man, uh, when did you start getting real serious about powerlifting? Because you played high school football, you was all what all state, all state in high school. I got defensive end or linebacker, outside was, linebacker, outside linebacker. I uh, got a fifteen on my ACT, which is very bad. If anybody knows anything about an ACT score, they said a monkey could do better than that. Um, so I got a lot of uh, a lot of letters, but not many offers. They all told me to go to junior college. Well, uh, I didn't go to junior college. Some other Division three school offered me, uh, you know, pretty much a full ride for Division three. Hey, you want to come here for a year? Yeah, I'm in. So I went down there, you know, kicked ass for a year, cut my finger off, cut my that. pinky off lifting weights right before the last game. Rookie of the year in the conference, everything was going good, was uh, planning on transferring into Northern Illinois University and then uh, went back to a community college and my grades went to shit. Why did it go to shit? Were you just distracted, didn't like to study? I don't like school. All I wanted to do was play football. That was it. I'm not, you know. Yeah, but when you're at the collegiate level, school goes with it. That's true. you got to be good enough to play pro for you can scrap all the books. Yeah. Hey, man, here's my story. I was in high school. I was a running back. I played linebacker, too. I was a pretty good linebacker. But I like running the football. And, dude, at a four nine forty, you know, in South Texas, mm-hmm. you know, I wasn't fast enough to run east or yeah. west. So I ran north and south, and I ran over people. I weighed 205. My line weighed 160, you know, each. <laughs> so I didn't have no blocking. So I made a lot of yards after contact. Went to junior college. Yeah. And I was thinking, man, I'm going to get all these offers from D1, you know, whatever, yeah. big school. And not so fast, my friend. I got an offer to go to junior college and a half scholarship to go to Texas Lutheran. Shit, I needed a full ride because, you know, fuck, we had to work our ass. I worked in class probably just like you. Yep. I told my mom's friend, I said, shit, Evelyn, I go to Wharton County Junior College. I'll make All-American a couple years and go to a big school. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the deal. 
when you go to junior college, there's some motherfuckers that can flat out play football. Oh, yeah. Because it's the people you, yeah. we just talked about. Fuck you could make a break, Texas. but you was, you was all state. Yeah. So, anyway, you had all Americans up there. Yeah, the people just didn't have the IQ. Or mm-hmm. there was a couple of guys who were dyslexic, couldn't make the grades. Dude, I got – I was lucky to start. I didn't make all conference. So, it didn't work out for me. It turned out okay. I had a backup plan with the business of pro wrestling and got a scholarship to North Texas State. So, he was in college, playing a little bit of football – and then uh, what was the weight training program like back then in the collegiate level? Because were you strong as fuck coming out of high school? I benched 405 pounds in high school as a junior oh, that's when, I was, when I was uh, 16. So, I, yeah, I've always been strong, especially my bench press is the strongest lift. And then, you know, I went to college. But tell me about the bench press real quick. Is it? It's build the chest, dude, fuck you, the rest, man. Dude, you got just gigantic delts, big chest. But is it, is it just pure strength, or has your body got to be built for it leverage-wise? Because, you know, my best bench was 440, but that was just in a gym with a little bounce. Nothing like what you're doing. Yeah, like a pause and all that yeah. bullshit. I think I'm built for it, you know. And then my old man, like I said, since I was in eighth grade, he had a, a bench right in our living room. So I'd come home from football practice, eighth grade. He'd be sitting there drinking a Pabst Blue Ribbon, and I'd be bench pressing. And he'd be saying, build the chest, fuck the rest. And that's just how I grew up. So I grew up like that. And then, you know, I went to high school and just got, you know, stronger and bigger and more. And, I mean, I'd sit in my garage and work out before I'd even go out, you know. That, that was, that's all I loved. I still love. So What, what about the deadlift? I think you pulling an eight-something? No, my best pull is 765. Um, that's at 220. 220 weight class. And squat? I squatted 804 raw, and then that was the same time I totaled uh, 2028 at 220, which at the time was a current top five total of all time. I think it's a current top 10 now of all time. So your training system, how about that? Oh, because cause over there in the competitive powerlifting world, as you yeah. well know, I mean, goddamn, you got Louis Simmons with West Side. You got Ernie France. Uh, Ernie Godfather. Franz, man. He's the yeah, Franz, yeah. however you say his name. But I, I mean, love that guy. Jesus He's one of my favorites. Well, I used to you know, read Powerlifting USA way back in the day. Yeah. So I was talking to Dan, our mutual friend, <laughs> yeah. just last night. And it's like, Jesus Christ, Ernie's still around. He's yeah. still training. So I got yeah. a video on my YouTube of me and him training at 82 years old. He's deadlifting still. It's great. Yeah. So guys like that. And then you got, again, you know, Little Bridge trains the same gym you're training at. Yep, Ernie Lilbert Sr. That's my coach. You got a bunch of strong ass guys. How many? And I read Jim Wendler's book, 531. I read several books. Yeah, I've read I didn't really apply too. it very well. It could have bridged a few more uh, gaps. And that, for you, you might understand it better than mm-hmm. me. So the different waves and thing kind of threw me off. But here, to get to the question you in the gym, you're trying to train, squat, bench, and deadlift, get your accessory work. Yep. How many days a week are you in the gym? I'm in the gym four days a week. Monday and Tuesday, I'm doing kind of accessories more, back, shoulders, you know, arms, shit like that. Thursday nights, usually my big bench night. And then um, Saturday or Sunday, depending on what's going on, uh, heavy squats or heavy deadlifts. So I go heavy squats, light deadlifts, the following week, heavy deadlifts, light squats. And that's pretty much Ernie Lillbridge Senior's program. Okay, now will you work up to, based on your last one rep max, or say it'll like your mm-hmm. last meet or whatever, yeah. will you get a percentage? Yeah, I base of it that? off a of percentage. Okay. I either base it off of my current percentage or a number I want to hit in the meet. You know, say I want to hit a, you know, 551 at my bench. That'll be my third attempt. Well, I'll take that and then I'll base percentages, you know, 10 weeks out all the way up. So, you know, one week I'm hitting 82% for so many reps, you know, and so on and so on. So. so how long does a gym session take you if, if it's your heavy day? Because <laughs> you're taking plenty of time yeah. between sets. Saturdays, I mean, it could take three to four hours um, for squats and deadlifts. A bench, at least two hours minimum. And then the other days, you know, an hour to two hours. What do you think the difference is, just because I was thinking about this before you came over, I never really gave it that much thought, really. And trying to build strength as a power lifter versus trying to build size hypertrophy as a bodybuilder, and the long hours you're spending in the gym, yeah. but the slow, you know, uh, training session, mm-hmm. high intensity because you're lifting a lot of weights. Yeah. But then the bodybuilder, you know, high intensity but a lot of pumping of the muscle, but also a lot of weights, sixes and eights. Yeah. And you're probably doing fives, threes, and doubles. Maybe, yes. Maybe singles. And some heavy singles. But you're pretty jacked up as a result of genetics. Is there what's the crossover? What's what's the correlation there? Well, Finns have always had good genetics, <laughs> but I always uh, I started to begin with. I wanted to be strong as fuck and look good naked. So, I mean, that's just how I I'm still am. So my squat, my bench, my deadlift, 
is a powerlifting style, all that setup powerlifting style. And then I do my accessories more towards like a bodybuilding style, you know, higher reps, you know, not as much rest in between and shit like that. So I still look good naked. So I what think. are you doing nutrition-wise as far as trying to take calories in? Because right now, I'm sitting across from me, what, you 240, 245? About 245, yeah. Okay. And if you're going to compete, 220? Or yeah. you, will you ever go back down to 198? <laughs> I don't know. I can't at this time. But right. I usually try to stay in the 230s when I compete at 220. I'll lose six pounds a week before I compete about with just carb manipulation, you know, cutting carbs at certain times. Um, and then about nine pounds of water weight. So I'd sit in a sauna for like six hours. I lose all that water weight, get to 220, boom, got 24 hour weigh in, drink seven Pedialytes, uh, two whole pizzas, hamburgers, french fries, sodium. I'd, I'd weigh in at 220. Fuck, 12 hours later, I'd weigh in at 242. So I'd gain 22 pounds, you know, in 12 hours. I don't know if that's So good what are you doing with your carbs uh, pre meat? Because they're going to be pretty high for you to be able to drop them and to lose that kind of mm-hmm. weight. I just guesstimate what your carb intake is because, like you said, I know your, your wife's measuring your protein. You're shooting for three to 400 grams of protein. Yep. So what about carbs? Um, I'd say the carbs would go down to, shit, at least under, like, 150. But normal. I mean, normal, but pre-meat. <sighs> shit, maybe under 75. I'd get him in the morning and maybe before I worked out. Those are the only times I'd eat carbs. No, but, okay, okay off-season. Off season, three, four, five hundred grams of carbs. Shit, probably. I mean, I'm eating at least a scoop of uh, you know rice or uh, potatoes or shit like that every single meal with my you know protein. About five meals. At least five meals, protein shakes, uh, protein bars. Okay, what about the beer drinking? Oh, because God, a lot of the stuff you post on Instagram. <laughs> let's get back to the Instagram account because you're uh, quite an entertaining uh, cat on here. It was funny over there on uh, Mark Bell's PowerCast. I said, hey, man, what are you, are you looking to be famous or get noticed or what? And it's like you said, uh, you do a lot of this shit just for shits and giggles and because it's if you're just sitting in a chair, who gives a fuck about you sitting in a chair? Right. All the entertaining stuff you do, right? I, I, I click on your Instagram account, and either I'm going "Wow," or this motherfucker's crazy, or I'm laughing my ass off. So it's some good shit. <laughs> uh, how do you come up with half the shenanigans you do? Ah, uh, shit. Well, <laughs> right now, currently, I'm working third shift in the prison, so half the night I'm I'm working the uh, galleries. The second half of the night, I go up to the tower. So I sit in a tower, and you don't do shit in a tower. You just sit up there. You got your, you know, your your shotgun, your rifle, and you're just staring out into space like. Duh, 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 but are you watching the yard? Are you watching monitors? No, I'm. I'm actually inside. Okay. So there's there's actual uh, you know towers inside. So I'm just looking at people sleeping. So uh, you know I I'm sitting there. I'm like you know, what am I good at? Well, I'm good at fucking drinking beer, and I'm good at bench pressing. So I go, I should put those two together. Let's do a 500 pound bench press and add a beer bong. I've never seen anybody do that. And that's just kind of how it all started. Yeah. So then I, I just sit in the tower at night and just write down ideas. Yeah. Stupid shit just come to my head. And then I, you know, go perform the next day. When you go do some of this stuff uh, at the gym, because there's, there's one video, you're on a true step mill, like the gauntlet, the one where yeah. the stairs rotate. Yeah. But you know the old school stair guy. Stair climb on it, it could kick your ass. And there's a couple of them. But in, we'll talk about the first one that I saw. And you got 225. You got two wheels on a bar. 225, and you're walking on the goddamn step mill. Yeah. You weigh 245. Man, that's 500 pounds right there. I don't know what the weight limit on those things is, but that's got to be approaching it. Yeah, it has Did to Did anybody be. ever come up to you and said, hey, dude, you're too much of an insurance liability. We can have you doing that shit here. Actually, at my old gym in uh, Juliet, they did, and I'm not allowed back in there anymore. <laughs> so pretty much I'm at Barbell Central from now on in Aurora if you want to see me. <laughs> Can you go back if you don't do the shenanigans? It's just they don't want you there, period. Um, actually, I don't think they want me there, period, you anymore. You might you're welcome out. I think I did. I think I did a little too many stunts in that gym. Okay, so what about the one where you had 225 on the bar? and No, someone had 225 on the bar on their backs, and they were sitting on your neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom Callis, who's a... Well, a good friend of mine. He's also he's got to be a good friend because Jesus yeah. Christ, you put him in harm's way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, videos. yeah. Well, he's a world record squatter. He has an all-time world record oh, okay. at 165. And uh, yeah, he put 225 on his back. I picked him up. Then we got on the the stairmaster together, you know. And we uh, it was for Valentine's Day. You he know? must we really embraced. trust you, or he well, shit. You see the other one? Oh, the one on the leg press? Yeah, yeah. That was a dangerous one. Holy shit! I didn't even think it was that dangerous until I saw the video. Well, I was watching it last night. I never saw the completion of it. Did you end up getting it? Because the time, I think the one I saw, I think you were doing a press, and he was 
or vice versa? Who was on top? He was on top squatting yeah. while I was doing the leg press and incline benching 315 pounds at the same time. How many takes did that take? That was a one take deal. The one, the, the only one that took a lot of takes really was uh, I did a 225 pound one arm bench press. I took about 25 takes because I couldn't get the balance. I kept fucking it up. And then I did it. It looks like it's, I mean, it's, it looked easy, but it, it was fucking hard as shit. Dude, 225. Uh, While well, doing a beer bong, too. Yeah. Yeah. Got to throw the beer bong in there. That was Miller Lite. Next time it's going to be this broken, broken man, skull was... IPA, brother. <laughs> broken skull IPA. It'll sneak up on you. I think it is. Yeah. Have you ever been injured doing any of the stuff you've been doing? No, I've never done, been injured doing anything real dumb. Um, the only time I've actually been injured was when I was bench pressing over at Mark Smelly Bell's gym there. Uh, I, I tore my that. pec tendon off the bone, benching 560 pounds. But you, you didn't sell it. I mean, you had the 560 on there. I think mm-hmm. you missed a little. They, they helped you because you just what? You just put up 520 or something before. Yeah, something 520, 525, which we did a sink of a mile little skit for it. I had snorted a line of sole off my arm, squirted two whole limes in each eye, took a shot of tequila, went and benched 525 like it was a feather. So, yep, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mark's behind me. And then, uh, yeah, 560, I, I figured, you know, I got that all day. I just did a 555 like three weeks prior to that. Right. Felt pretty easy. And then just never know, it just popped. Yeah, but here's the thing. You, you pop the pack, and then the next day, you're in there deadlifting like a motherfucker. Yeah, deadlifting 500 pounds double you over. You got a little bit of bruising here. <laughs> yeah. And then you had to have surgery to fix it. Yep. But yet you're pulling, oh, gee, I think you pulled over five that day. Yeah. Well, I figured, hey, Mark flew me all the way out here. I better do some shit. You know, <laughs> broken peck or not. <laughs> how, how is the, 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 the peck? I know it's not engaged. It's a back movement. But, I mean, when you're doing something like the deadlift, it's kind of an overall body lift. You just had a you could pretty feel acute the, tear. Did yeah. you feel that? Yeah, you could feel it pulling on it pretty good. But, but is there I had a couple type, beers okay, in Okay, but what did you say? Like, hey, man, you know, shit. Come on. Well, they, uh, they, Tom, they, all right, I'm kind of, you know, some of these shenanigans are getting out of hand. I'm getting beat, beat up here, getting injured. Uh, you feel like taking yourself out of harm's way? Will this pec tear impede your ability to get, you know, I guess you're going to try to shoot for 600 or? Yeah, that'd 70? be the goal right now. It's definitely 600. It's always been a goal of mine, you know. So what's the story with the, with the process of getting the chest healed up properly? Well, and did, were they able to reattach that at where it, te- where it was yeah. hooked on to? The surgery went well. They reattached it. Uh, it was the pec tendon. Um, and I have been going to Kentucky, Paducah, Kentucky. I don't know if you've ever been there. Yeah, to, maybe a time or two. To uh, IMAC down there. They've been – IMAC Regeneration Center, I've been doing PRP. I drive down there 12 hours round trip once a month, and they give me PRP. They draw my blood, they spin it, they shoot it right back in. And uh, I think within, what, six or seven months, I had benched over 500 pounds again. And I, yeah, the only thing I really did different was that. So I think the PRP is good. It helped me heal pretty fast. But at 220, I mean – Shit, right now, I mean, you could be what? You're, you're, you are top three, top five? Yeah, all time. All time? Yeah. So what's um, the goal there? I mean, well, I, I don't know. I mean, Powerlifting, I don't really feel like Powerlifting is like football is a sport. I mean, I took football like it was like fucking everything. I mean, that was my life. Powerlifting is more fun, you know? Like, I love being strong. I, I, I'll go fucking, you know, if somebody wants to go out bench me right now, I'll go out bench somebody in a garage. I don't care where a meet's at, you know? But I just like to lift weights. So right now, that's just all I like to do. You lift weights and drink beer. All right, Tom. Let me take another pause for the calls right here, and then we're going to talk about bench shirts and gear, about the color you get in some of your videos, and how you got into powerlifting in the first place. And for everyone listening who wants to get stronger too and in better shape but ain't going to be a powerlifter, there's a program that will work for you, and that's DDP Yoga. Diamond Dallas Page knows how hard it is to get on that path to healthier living and stick to it. And that's why he created DDP Yoga. Dallas gives you all the tools and information you need to eat better, exercise, and monitor your progress. He also offers plenty of his own personal motivation. And right now, he's offering y'all 30% off the DDP Yoga Now app and all DDPY-related merch. You can get 30% off t-shirts, mats, heart monitors, hats, and more. So download the DDP Yoga Now app and get to work. There are so many workouts to choose from, or you can do live workouts from the DDP Yoga Performance Center. And you can do DDP Yoga anytime, anywhere. 
Just open up the app on your phone or tablet, choose the workout, and go. So get on the DDP Yoga program today and change your life. Just go to ddpyoga.com slash Austin and take advantage of this huge sale. 30% off the DDP Yoga Now app and all DDP Yoga related merch. Go to ddpyoga.com slash Austin. One more time, that's ddpyoga.com slash Austin. If you're in the market for a car, then you need to check out truecar.com and the True Car app. True Car gives you prices and information you need to feel confident about your purchase. When you register with True Car, you'll see what other people in your local market paid for the car you want. From there, you can connect with a local True Car certified dealer and enjoy a more confident car buying experience. True Car shows you real pricing on actual inventory, so you see competitive pricing offered to you by True Car certified dealers for vehicles that are actually on their lots. True Car makes car buying easy, no matter if you're looking for a brand new or a used vehicle. And there's over 500,000 pre-owned vehicles available from True Car certified dealers nationwide, and there are over 13,000 True Car certified dealers. And over 2 million cars have been sold to True Car users by the True Car certified dealer network. True Car users save an average of over $3,000 off MSRP. So when you're ready to buy a new or used car, visit TrueCar.com or download the True Car app to enjoy a better car buying experience. Some features not available in all states. Steve Austin, Unleashed. Unleashed. Okay, right now, man, when I'm looking at you, you probably 10, 12% body fat max. I mean, you're in pretty, shape, pretty good shape. Yeah. So... All the beer drinking in the videos. Yes. Dude, how much beer are you drinking every single day? And I know you're drinking light beer, but still that's beer. Yeah. Well, that's right. You got to watch the beer. Usually once a week I, I drink, you know, pretty good. And then uh, if I'm doing videos, I'll drink a couple beers here and there, but not much during the week. I have a really strict diet, you know, through my work week, Monday through Friday. My meals are done. I eat pretty strict, kind of like a bodybuilder. And then my weekend, it's like party time. I'll, I'll eat pizza, tacos. It, whatever uh drink beer have a good time hang out uh and i've been doing that since i've been like 17 and it's worked and now i'm 34 dude five and two if you're doing five clean and two or whatever mm-hmm. that's awesome yeah i mean because you know that the majority of your time is spent doing healthy things doing yeah. the training the other two days are the holidays so yeah you know you can do that but the thing the reason i bring that up because you caught some uh, some people throwing some heat at you on Instagram or Twitter, wherever the fuck it was. So, oh, man, guys, he's drinking too much or whatever. <laughs> it's a prop. Yeah. He's, he's doing it to film the damn thing. So it's not like you're in the gym every single day getting juiced up. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just you're, you're, you might have a couple of beers while you're filming one of these things, but by and large, for the most part, you're fine. It's kind of for show sometimes. Right. You know, it's just I throw a beer in there for show. It looks yeah. good. It's, it's kind of like who I am, you know. I mean, some people think – Oh, this guy, he goes in the gym and just does a dumb video and drinks a lot of beer. Well, I'm not going to look like that if that's all I did. Exactly. I go in there, I work my fucking ass off for two and a half hours. Me and my buddy, we have a beer or something. We do a dumb video. We go home, we laugh. I mean, that's what it is. <laughs> well, that's why I get it. Like I said, I say, wow, I'm laughing my ass over. I'm thinking this motherfucker's crazy. I'm like, he shouldn't be drinking beer while he's doing that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's part of it. Yeah, yeah. And who's telling me that? Some uh, <laughs> Hundred pound kid in his grandma's basement. I mean, who? I mean, what the hell? It's always the people that have the identity of an egg or yep, whatever. Exactly, or just some gimmick. Of, mm-hmm. what, what, what's the thing called? Protected profile. What's that thing called? Your emoji or your uh, what's it called? Your handle. Yeah, you know, your Twitter picture, whatever that's called. Your oh. Pro- yeah, your profile picture, whatever it is. They're like on Twitter, but some yeah. people, all of a sudden they got a picture of, I don't know, that tree right there or yeah, yeah. an egg. And, and they got like two followers. Yeah, and they're, they're throwing some shit at you. It's like, yeah, yeah. okay, you hide behind the egg. Right. Put your face up there and say yeah. shit. Yeah, come to the gym. You know where I'm at, Barbell Central. I'm there Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Come see me. Okay, so uh, you work in a prison guard. So what's that? Is that a 40-hour week or y'all working 12-hour shifts? No. I mean, what is it? Well, I'm working 40-hour weeks. And my days off currently are Wednesday and Thursday. Terrible days off, working third shift, you know. Uh, What's the third shift? Is that like? 11 to 7. Okay. Got to be there at 1045, which most of the time I'm there about a minute late, just like I was today at your place. Well, thanks. God damn Wish it. You're consistent. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're late. I wanted, to get here, yeah, I wanted to get here two weeks ago, man. You know, and then I'm late. What an asshole. Uh, what do you do for hobbies? Fuck. Uh, lift weights. Drink beer. Watch the Chicago Bears and the Cubs. Hey, I was on the Game 4 
pregame show of the Cubs in the World Series this year as the strongest Cub, the world's strongest Cub fan, where I was deadlifting 500 pounds with one arm and then hitting uh, empty beer cans with the other for three reps. Man, I always watch uh, baseball right when they start getting ready for playoffs. Oh, yeah. The World Series. Okay, but I'm a football guy. So Me too. So, talking about the Bears, it looks like they're maybe going to release Jay Cutler. What are your thoughts on that? But it's going to be hard to get rid of him because of his deal. No, no, his guaranteed money is yes, they can gone. I heard he's going to retire. Yeah. Somebody said so, that today. I, I just heard that somewhere. I don't know. I, I mean, I've heard from people that I, I've known uh, that, that – uh, that, that they've met him before, and they say he's a complete asshole. So I don't know him, never met him, but the, uh, I, I'm, I'm happy when he's gone. You know, bring back Jim McMahon, that's what I say. Bring back Mike Ditka, the coach. Yeah. You know, who would win a fight? Uh, the New York Giants or uh, Coach Ditka? <laughs> what if the Giants were all giant Ditkas? So uh, is the Chicago Bears your favorite football team? Yeah, so Super Bowl Sunday, there's a bar called Fatty's Pub in DeKalb, Illinois, that will play the 85 Bears game well january 26 1986 super yeah. bowl 20 and i will go there and i will sit through the whole thing commercials and all every year and then i'll just go home and hardly even watch super bowl because that's all i love is the bears what do you think about the super bowl this year because if i had a bus out to hell it's just lead at halftime then all of a sudden that yeah. goddamn i know everybody in the world's a lady gaga fan yep uh you me, are? I'm a little bit more into the hair metal. I'm a little more country music. And I'm all country like music. That. That's all I listen God to. Damn. So I didn't watch a halftime festivities, and that's no disrespect to. The, What'd you uh, watch? I was in here making margaritas because <laughs> I was drinking. <laughs> uh, so anyway, my point is, uh, I saw. I always like when the, the the analysts break down the show because they do a little bit of right after the the yeah. the post uh, first half. And then they do the Super Bowl, and then they come back to, you know, make some adjustments, and they go back to the air and start playing the football game again. Dude, that's all I want to watch. But they don't do that the whole time. they got to do the Super Bowl show for the damn ratings. And so I'm in here making margaritas, and the uh, Falcons open up with a hellacious lead, and all of a sudden they come back, and the Patriots, that first touchdown they scored, I said, okay, man. And then, boom, again, Atlanta starts nutting up. Holding penalty, sacks, and all of a sudden, boom, Brady's got those some bitches and they win the Super Bowl. What were your thoughts? Well, I didn't want I wanted Atlanta to win. And then they came up with such a big lead, I'm like, man, this is fucking boring. I kinda want New England to come back just to make it a good game. Well, they came back too much and then they ended up winning the game. So what did you think when Arthur Blank went down there on the sideline? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he, went down there, he looked pretty down sad the there with his wife down there, <laughs> you know, waiting. And then, you know, they lost the game. Hey, do, you, do you think it was? Well, hold on. Are you? You're an NFL fan. Who are you a fan of? The Cowboys? No, I tell this to everybody. I'm like a pro wrestling fan, you know, as it applies to football. I follow the storylines of, of who the who the guys are, who the coaches are, who the players are. For like, here's the thing. A lot of people like if you say America's team, Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Everybody loves Cowboys. I like the Cowboys too. I'm from I hate Texas. The no, but, but but let me continue. A lot of people hate the New England Patriots. Yeah. Oh, de- deflate gate or uh, spy gate, any kind of gate, front gate, whatever the fuck it was. Mm-hmm. I like Bill Belichick. Yeah. I saw that 30 for 30 on him or whatever it was. Hey, man, that's just a guy who right. loves to coach football. He's hardworking. He knows his shit. He likes to go bass fishing. or fishing Yeah, him and Jimmy ocean. Johnson. Yeah. Seen, yeah. So they go do their thing, man, and he treats the press like he does. I yeah. just think he's super smart and he's super cool. And then like Brady. He gets drafted 199. He works his balls off, turns into one of the greatest quarterbacks of yeah. all time, and he marries a supermodel along the way, and he <laughs> happens to be a great human being. How can you not yeah. like that? Yeah, everybody how can hates you him. not respect that? Yeah. He wasn't in the first round. He True. wasn't in the first 10, He's 20 picks, 199. Yeah. So he comes back to do that. I, I got nothing but respect for him. So, uh, like back when the New Orleans Saints uh, won it right after Katrina, yeah. Drew Brees is having a hell of, hell of a year. He's a Hall of Fame guy. So I was following them at that time. So it's just different teams at different times and quite frankly when that game started it'd been nice to see Atlanta win their first Super Bowl yeah but then all of a sudden like you said they started off whipping our ass it's like man it would be neat to see Brady get that fifth ring but it'd be nice to see Matt Ryan get his first ring and away it came hey man it's like that one receiver said I think it was Sanu uh, for uh the Falcons yeah the guy said oh man they ain't never seen nothing like us they say hey man but that's Tom Brady they said, no, we got this. No, I think the halftime was too long, mm-hmm. and they just kind of yeah. momentum shifted. I think they adrenaline dumped. I think they had it. They thought they had it won. I don't know if it was as much. Tom Brady did pull a comeback out, but also, man, that's just the Patriots believe in Patriots football, and they just stayed the course, and Atlanta got fucked up. 
I say go Bears. And the Bears, I don't think they're going to be good for years. I mean, oh, they got they got they problems, got, big they, problems. They got they got all kinds of problems. <laughs> Terrible. And so they got a long way. I mean, who's going to be their quarterback? They don't. Colors not even in the system. They got no. I mean, who are you going to? Nobody. Were they, they going to draft one? What was that college you say you wanted to go to? Northeastern Illinois. Was no, I was, I, was I was very uh, good friends with the head recruiter there. Is Northern Illinois. They, I mean, they Northern were good. Normal play somewhere. In Eastern. Illinois. Eastern. Him and Garoppolo, they, the quarter, the backup quarterback for New England. Garoppolo's there. hot. They're talking about uh, coming to the Bears. Someone wanting to be a. Oh, this, really? I heard that they might trade that third pick for Garoppolo. <laughs> No, a lot, of, a lot of teams have the hots for that guy. 25 years old, three years in the league. Uh, been an understudy to Brady. Got to play a couple of games. What happened to the last one? Jacoby though? Brissett coming there for a game. Oh, yeah. Remember, what's his name? It went to Kansas City. The, the old backup quarterback from Brady. I forget his name. But, yeah. I mean, he was a dud. Right. You know, and if Belichick gets rid of him, he might, he might not. I mean, he, he'd, he'd get rid of him for a reason. If he's good, he'd keep him because Brady don't have that many years left. Man, but that Jacoby Brissett did real, real good. Uh, he broke a bone in his foot in that, that one game he played. Yeah. So he looked very promising. Buck Garoppolo does, too. Bill Belichick's smart as fuck because yeah. if he's going to trade him, he's going to get some value out oh, of him. Yeah. So either way, but they got. what do you think is going to happen to Tony Romo? Because he's the one that's going to be hard to get rid of because of his contract structure. I think he's going to come out and he's going to be like Brett Favre. He's going to do the same thing Favre did, right? What, Favre didn't want to retire. You know, he's at the Packers. So what happened? The, Favre ended up getting uh, – traded the Jets or whatever the hell happened, you know. I'm pretty sure that's the same thing is going to happen to Roman. Roman will play a couple more years somewhere, and uh, he'll try to, you know, come back and stick it up the Cowboys' ass probably. What do you think about him as quarterback? <sighs> First off, I don't like the Green Bay Packers. I hate the Green Bay Packers. I'd rather see the Packers lose than the Bears win. Um, and my second oh, – why, why the hate for the Packers? Oh, man. I'm so sick of the Packers. The cheeseheads, man. The, Wisconsin's right by us. Right. And they, they've been kicking our ass for how long – and it's just terrible. I mean, the women up there, they got beards. Uh, I mean, they're bigger drinkers than me. Uh, I mean, they'll beat you up. I mean, I, I just hate the Packers. I did like Brett Favre, though. Once he, left the, once he left the Packers, I was a big fan of Brett Favre's. I was hoping he'd stick it right up their ass, you know. But I tell you what, man, Aaron Rodgers came in there. And oh, I hate the Aaron Rodgers. There, there was so much heat between those two. Yeah. And it was really uh, seem, seemingly from where I was at on Brett's end – and Aaron was just, man, he was the understudy. All of a sudden, he gets his opportunity. Man, he's smoking. He's playing great football. Yeah, two of the best quarterbacks And they would ever. go up there to Shide town to play y'all's Bears, and the quarterback <laughs> yeah. was a mismatch there because Cullen could never hang with him, and those two are good friends. We've had, like, 40 different quarterbacks, and the Green Bay's had, like, two in 20 years, and they've been, like, both one of the two Hall of Famers, you know. Right. So it, it sucks. Hey, fuck football. You out here, uh, you live in, what, Aurora? No, I live in Plainfield, okay, which but, is but close. Illinois, I mean. I, yeah, I, it's I, uh, I, outside I, of Chicago. I got to give you this one, Illinois. Yeah, the noise. Bother you when I say Illinois? Fuck no, nothing bothers me, man. Illinois. Yeah, no, nothing bothers Tom Finn. Okay, yeah. so it's cold as fuck over there right now. <sighs> Actually, you come we out it. here to Los Angeles. You're in your eight man strong <laughs> shirt. Got yeah. the sleeves cut yeah. off. It's damn near a tank top. The you people are out here in here? sweatshirts and shit and <laughs> jackets. I'm like, this is vacation, baby. We're out here in California. <laughs> when you see the city slickers that live here in Los Angeles, <laughs> when I go to a little grocery store over here, when they cross the street, man, they're all bundled yeah. up. They got these jackets like people in Chicago would be wearing for oh, real cold weather. God, yeah, like they're wearing for 55 degrees. Below zero? I yeah. know. It's so it's, it's crazy, man. So what do you think about the weather out here in the gym system? I mean, obviously you trained at the Mecca. That's a badass gym. But it's even kind of quelled down a little bit because the heyday of bodybuilding, to me, it's never going to be what it was. It's yeah. still going forward. It's still, it's still around. But back then, everybody who was anybody used to train there. How was the atmosphere uh, there today? And did you draw a lot of looks? Were you throwing shit around, using chalk, yelling? What, what's the story? Yeah. Because you can't find a hardcore gym anymore other than like a Barbell Central, West Side. Or yeah. those, I'm, I'm not name dropping on these yeah. gyms because they're the only ones I know about. But it's hard to find a good power gym. 24-hour fitness, LA Yeah, fitness. I mean, it's not like they got deadlift bars in there. Dude, you roll in LA fitness to start pulling five, six, seven wheels off the ground. People shit their pants and run out the doors. They did. I got a video <laughs> that I was deadlifting, I think, seven. Hundred pounds, and uh, people just turned. It was like uh, it was Lifetime Fitness, a real fancy joint. I mean, like I don't know, hundred bucks a month to join or some shit. And I'm deadlifting seven hundred pounds, and the plates are flying off each rep, each plate, each plate, all the way down to the fucking bar. We just turn around, what the hell's going on over there? But yeah, I mean, there's no gym like the gym I train at. I love that gym. I mean, I've done so much dumb shit in there. We there's so many strong guys in there. For one, it's the atmosphere. Atmosphere is the best. You need that atmosphere to be the best. You know, you got like guys like Eric Lillibridge. He's fucking squatting a thousand goddamn pounds. 
Jesus Christ. I was looking on your Instagram account, and all of a sudden I was okay. I was talking to my buddy, our mutual friend, yeah. Dan. So I was looking on, on Eric's account. I was like, God damn, that's the first time. I'd been hearing about the Little Bridge name forever. Yeah. And, uh, man, I stopped. You know, I don't, is Powerlift New USA still around? The magazine? Yeah. No, the only magazine okay. that's a Powerlift magazine right now is Mark's, the Power magazine. Okay, you'll have to uh, turn me on to that. But yeah. I kind of, you know, I'm not real current, but since I'm good friends with Smelly, yeah. At Super Training, you know, I stay in touch with what's going right. on. But, hell, I'd been hearing about Little Bridges, and Dan kept talking about them. So I said, well, shit, let me check these guys out. Holy fuck. That dude is big as shit. Yeah. Is 300 pounds? How uh, tall is that 315, guy? I don't know, maybe 5'11", 6 foot, probably 5'11", 310 pounds. That dude is solid. Strong as a motherfucker. One of my favorite videos was when he was, uh, a couple years ago, we were all at this one other gym, and... Uh, him and this other guy, Derek Kendall, were chasing a thousand pound squat at the time. Oh man, he passed out doing 881 for like four or five reps. Racks it, blood's coming out of his mouth, his nose, and I, I think his ears. He passes out. What do they do? Let him lay on the ground. They're just putting more plates on. More plates. More plates. Who gives a shit? Somebody might give him a towel or something. Kick him in the ribs. Let's go. More plates. In an atmosphere like that, you can't ask for a better atmosphere. And that, and that's how it started. Like. I was benching 500 pounds and drinking Miller Lite and not competing. Er- Ernie Lowbridge Sr. is like, who is this fucking Tom Finn guy? He's benched 500 pounds. He's just some idiot. He needs to come train with me. This guy could be the best in the world tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, I'll come over there and train with you. So then I got serious. I think it was my second or third meet within a couple months. And I, t- like I said, I told <laughs> top five total of all time. Thanks to Ernie Sr. It just kind of, you know, pushing me towards it. Hey, I want to go back to the motivation thing, and I want to ask you about Ernie Senior's training program because uh, obviously they've had a lot of success. Jesus Christ, those guys have built yeah. like a brick shit house. Uh, yeah, when you go to the gym, like when goals, you got motivation. Mm-hmm. Like I'm sure if you went to your gym, Barbell Central, all the dude, dude, y'all got people, y'all got shit, probably ten guys in there that shit squat at least six, seven hundred pounds. Oh, I mean, yeah, for sure, easily. I mean, I, we have higher weights than that, but I mean, we yeah, get into the, the really elite category. Yeah. But I mean. If you go in any gym, you're not going to have hardly anybody that's going to squat over three wheels. Yeah. 315 pounds because nobody squats heavy in, in most of the gyms across USA anymore. True. So what's the motivation for you? I mean, little bridges keep you going? I mean, is it, you, is it is just your self-drive or just because something you love to do? I mean. All the above. I'd love to do it. Um, it's all I know how to do. Uh, and if I'm ever not motivated, you know, I just kind of watch maybe – I like Mark Smelly Bell's video, the uh, Fuck Your Elbow video. I love that video. I used to watch it all the time. I always do a video for that. What, what's the Fuck Your Elbow video? I haven't seen that one. Uh, he did one a year or two ago. It wasn't his song. video. Right. Somebody made it about him, mm-hmm. and it starts off. He, it's like, I, uh, I fell with 1,000 pounds on my back, and I don't need help because I'm a man. or some bullshit he fall down yeah. in. Him, and it's just it's great. Like one Metallica, one's playing in the background, and he's talking a little bit, and it goes in. I don't know. It's just a great video. Hey, speaking of uh, the 1,000-pound squats, this is something that flashed through my brain while ago. I'm glad you brought that up, falling down with 1,000 pounds on your back. These days with the you – know, how long has the monolith been around now? Ernie Franz invented it. Did he? Supposedly Ernie Franz invented it and made no money off of it. Yeah. God damn. Ago. Well, when did that thing come about, though? God, I, I, I would guess in the 90s sometime. Okay, so anyway, you know, like when you come out with a heavy squat, you know, back in the old days, you have to pick it out of the squat rack, mm-hmm. walk, it, walk it back, you know, knee wraps, everything on belt, squat, get red lighted, green lighted, dump yeah. it, whatever, walk it back in, and then put it down. See, so these days with the monolift, just. Well, there's set. a big thing in powerlifting now. People walk their squats out, some people don't walk their squats out. I mean, who gives a shit? So one day I, <laughs> I took 600 pounds knee sleeves, walked it out, out the gym. 50 yards, out the door, outside. It was negative 10 that day, and I squatted it to depth. I saw it. And then I turned around and <laughs> walked it back in, and the guy got scared, stopped recording, and followed me back, and I got pissed. I, honestly, that was the hardest thing I've ever done. I couldn't breathe for like an hour after that. Really? Yeah. It, it was tough. Oh, my question is, so these days, like at a meet, if a guy is going to get crumpled, what was the weight that Ed Cohn was squatting? Wasn't it, wasn't it Ed that went down and got crunched? Oh, Many years a, ago? There's been a few. I know. Okay, my point is, why don't they have you know, those like a straps. safety strap? You know, they so do. Sometimes they don't use them, though. They have those straps. Uh, yeah. You ever see them? Sometimes they don't use them. 
God damn it, just when you start handling that kind of weight and things go south, because, yeah, you know, even if you got your spotters, when you're talking about north of 800, I mean, right. fuck, north of 600. Yeah. And, and it goes candy wampus mm-hmm. on you. That's a fucked up situation. Now the guy's pushing a grand, more than a grand. Yeah. I mean, it only makes sense. Use the fucking the straps, the, the, the gimmick straps, whatever you want to call them, safety straps. Yeah. Well, some people don't, don't like it. I mean, they train without them. Okay, uh, let's talk about powerlifting for a second. You're going into a meet. Uh, you love competition, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, and then uh, you always start off with the squat. Yep. Okay, the ammonia. Is that something that you employ before every single lift? Or whatever it is, the smelling capsules. What, what the fuck is that? I mean, I don't really care about ammonia. I... Well, I mean, I see you use some in your videos or you're snorting chum. Yeah. You're you... fucking around. So, <laughs> I mean, give me the deal. Well, about, I, what I'm trying to get to is what is your mindset when you're fixing to start on your approach? You get three lifts. You can Usually my top out. lift, I'll do something yeah. to just get me fired up as fuck. Um, sometimes I use that, you know, like uh, shake it around. You smell it kind of, you mm-hmm. know, it's like uh, it'll kind of make it tear up a little bit, especially if it's fresh. But a lot of times I like to take a shot of whiskey. And uh, that fires me up. It does because like beer is gonna fill you up. You take a shot of whiskey, it fucking gives you that heat in your gut. You know what I mean? Is yeah. that allowed in competition? I don't think so, but I, I usually put it in something else so people don't know what it is. Kfa, that's what it be. Yeah, kfa right. wrestling yeah, yeah. Uh, industry. So you got the kfa whiskey shot. Okay, uh, like it is uh, a well documented fact that in a high state, uh, I don't know, not a high state of awareness, but uh, prepare preparedness. You know, if you're psyched up, run this going, okay, I'm going to lift this. Yeah. Go, calm, cool. Well, what kind of lifter are you? Oh, I get psyched up. I'll, I, my wife always gets pissed at me. She comes, I'll come home, and I always, if I have a heavy bench that day, I hit my bar because I line my forehead up with that bar right in the center is where my forehead should be. So I make sure it's lined up there, and I'll hit it as hard as I fucking can, and I'll start bleeding everywhere. I don't give a fuck. I don't even feel it because I'm so psyched up, and that psychs me up even more. So... So what's the worst uh, accident or incident that's ever happened to you, whether it was on a squat, shit in your pants, blowing a wheel out, I mean, a heavy dead, where you pulled your peck, I mean, heavy bench, or like a, a deadlift? What's, what's the worst thing that's happened to you in, in your career or just in your, well, your lifting endeavors? The peck tenant was probably the worst because I was, I was pretty much at my peak at the time. I mean, I was, you know, squatting well over 800 pounds, you know, approaching – maybe seven eight i mean 800 pound deadlift and my bench was at an all-time high and then that happened and it kind of just you know blew a tire out well goddamn 16 times uh 16 plus five what's that 21 yeah i wanted to go at least over 2100 yeah was my goal but it's kind of like superhuman then i fucking blew the pack out how'd that fuck your mind up depression yeah. down in the dumps i know you were laughing you know for like, like but smelly six weeks was bad deadlift. six I mean, weeks was bad definitely yeah, that bad sucks I had my arm taped to my side. I couldn't take a shower. I had my wife had to wipe, or not wipe me, but clean me up in the shower and shit. I'd be downstairs listening to this old country song. Um, it's called uh, something about uh, on a train, on a slow train to Georgia. I'm gonna, I'll be better off in a pine box on a slow train to Georgia. I would listen to that song on repeat and just drink. And my wife would come down downstairs. Everything okay down there? I'm like, yeah, why? Well, it's dark down here. Listen to sad country songs and drinking by yourself. Is that Clint Black? No, it's like... Doug something. I'd be better off. I don't, but I know what you I'd be better off in a pine box yeah, on a slow yeah, train so. to Georgia. Yeah. But that might not be the worst. I mean, I cut my finger off, like I said, in college, my pinky. Got yeah, that but that was a weird incident. You had dumbbells sitting by the bench. You mm-hmm. had to drop your dumbbells that you had. You, you know, the uh, guillotine effect was in a yep. fly. And, yeah. yeah. I, I looked at my finger. I didn't even know I cut it off. I looked at it. I thought it was my nail that was cut off or bent up, you know. I look at it again. I'm like, oh, shit, that's my bone. So when you're deadlifting now, pulling the kind of weights you're pulling, is that the under, underhand or overhand side? Underhand, underhand but so I mean... So probably would help. I mean... Yeah, it might help a little bit, but I can double overhand almost 600 pounds, though, still. So it's just... It don't straighten out. That's about the only thing. Are you a proponent of, like, working for grip strength, or do you get enough of that shit hanging on the bar? No, I don't, I don't really do anything for grip strength at all. Some people, I guess, maybe have weak grip strength but i've never dropped a deadlift because of grip strength it's because i wasn't strong enough no but i see sometimes you know like uh shit you know i've always used straps when i train back just to help isolate the last just to hang on to shit yeah i was like i ain't got no problem hanging on to nothing mm-hmm. but i just like using straps some of it's old school oh, god damn you need to work on your grip strength hey, fuck you if you won't go <laughs> work on your grip strength go do it yeah yeah i'm fine with my goddamn lifting straps yeah yeah i don't believe i don't do any type of grip strength training at all no who is that guy jesus christ andy bolton I was, yeah, yeah, uh, dude from England, right? Is he from England? He, wanted, he first got to pull a thousand. He pulled a thousand six. 
Yeah. Was that in meat or with straps? It was in a gym. I don't know. I know, I think currently the heaviest deadlift is that guy from England, the world's strongest man, but it's a world's strongest man deadlift. Yeah, that, that was... He just, uh, I just watched his documentary. That was one of the magnets. Eddie Hall. Guys. No, Eddie Hall. Eddie Hall? Yeah, he okay. did it. I think he did it in front of Arnold Schwarzenegger last year somewhere. Damn, I thought Andy Bolton pulled a 10.06 in competition. Anyway, he started off... If, if I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, if you're a powerlifting aficionado, don't worry about it. <laughs> My point is, he was going through his warm-up process. He started off with one wheel. Mm -hmm. Man, you know, he had long arms. He's super heavy. Yeah. And just Got good leverages. Yeah, he just pick it up and just put it down. Yeah. Same thing, 225, 350. Then all of a sudden, you know, he's got yeah. a little weight on the bar. What's the warm-up process for you on something like a deadlift? Definitely plate flips. You plate flip pretty much all the way up to near your top set. So up to at least six plates, plate flips, then... Uh, 25 plate flips after that. So you, you're you not a person that was, okay, I'm going to deadlift day. Let me do uh, a set of 10 with 135. No. A set of 10 with 225. Just one time. Yeah. No, no. I, I go maybe five, 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 three, one, 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 all the way to my top set. Then the top set would be, you know, maybe a max rep set. So whatever the day, it would be maybe 675, 700, how many reps, you know, after that. What's the Little Bridge system versus what Louis Simmons is doing at Westside versus what Ernie France was doing back in the day versus what Mark Bell is doing at Super Training? What's the best way to get fucking strong? Follow a program. Follow any program, you're going to get strong. I mean, that's the key. If you're following a program, you're going to get strong, no matter whose program it is. You know, I follow Ernie Little Bridge's program because I'm with Ernie Little Bridge, you know, and it's, it's worked great. It's I'm, how many world records have come out of his program. I mean, it speaks for itself. And he's, he's a big proponent. It's kind of similar to the West Side, but he's a big proponent of, you know, heavy top sets, very heavy top sets, singles and doubles. But I was talking to Dan, our mutual friend at Barbell Central. You guys, well, the word from me to Dan or Dan to me was, you guys ain't so much into uh, uh, chains. I've never used chains. I've never used bands. Okay, what about uh, board presses? Rarely. Just to work on that portion of the movement, because yeah. I, I know that's big at Westside. Well, a lot of people do that because they're shirt adventures. Right. You know what I mean? I've incorporated a little bit, but the only thing I've really done, you know, other than just bench pressing, I just bench press. But I'll throw in the slingshot once in a while, especially after a workout or after my top set of bench, just to overload. Right. You know, overload my, my bench. How much more? I, I love, uh, yeah, let's say no plug for the, uh, what's it called? The, slingshot. The slingshot. Goddamn, Mark sent me a couple of those down to Texas. Yeah. And believe it or not, I, 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 as wide as you are, I don't know if you can do it, but I also was able to use them when I was doing the military. Yeah, you can because, use them anyway. Yeah, you can yeah. still use them oh, for military press. But I was using them, you know, for my bench. And, you know, I was able to put a lot more weight on the bar. Yeah, for and sure. It was, it, was, uh, it was cool for me because it was like a, it was like a confidence booster. Because mm -hmm. I'm not just shit how strong. I don't like to train with nobody, so I'm training by myself. But yeah. I could put some extra weight on the bar. And it's a full range of motion, too. It's yeah. a bench. It's not a board press. What's the story with the bench shirts? Are you wearing one of those? I've never worn a bench shirt in my life. My bench shirt is the shirt I'm wearing right now. Either that or I'm naked. You know, I, I, I mean, I got... I've never used one. I don't think I ever will. I think gear was popular in the late 90s into the 2000s, and then all of a sudden raw just got very, very popular. When I started competing, I mean, hell, the first time I ever competed, everybody was wearing gear except for me. I had to wear a fucking wrestling single from my high school. I was 17 years old at the Illinois State meet, Ernie Franz's gym. Yeah. Ernie Franz's gym right there on Broadway. I got first place. I was the only guy in a single. Everybody else was walking around, you know, like the, the walking dead. Was RCD wearing a bench shirt when he bent 705 way back in the day when no one ever t – t t here's the thing. I'm older than you, but when Ted RCD bent 705 and he later tried to get on, have a little bit of a run in pro wrestling, and I was a big RCD fan uh, out of Boston, I guess. Uh, was that shirted? It was just like a single ply. Was, was, I'm, I'm sure it was kind of like a really shitty shirt. I mean, they right. weren't very good at all back then, so I'm sure it was almost a raw bench. But these days, those goddamn shirts are adding upwards 300 of 300 pounds. pounds. Yeah, I know. It's, it's insane, man. I could bench almost 900 pounds if I threw a shirt. If I knew how to use it correctly. I just don't get that. I don't either. Uh, who's the strongest guy you've trained with? Probably there, the Little Bridges in, or Maynooth there in Barbell Central? Well, I'd say Eric. You train with Stan Everding? No, I never trained with Stan. I, I, Eric, uh, I mean, hell, he's, I've seen him pull 900-plus a few times. I've seen him squat 1,000-plus a few times. His squat and his deadlifts are by far, I mean, yeah, he's one of the strongest guys in the world. I'd so say definitely Eric Lowbridge. Eric Lowbridge or Ernie Franz. 
Yeah. Yeah. At 82 years old. Yeah. <laughs> so on, on your heavy days, are you guys all in there on your heavy day and you, you support each other or you're competing against each other or you're all doing your own thing, but it's a heavy day so you're all in there on, pretty much on the same schedule? Yeah, I mean, it depends. See, uh, we used to train together a lot, but then it kind of got split up a little bit. And now it's, you know, Little Bridges, they train at weird times. So I'll train with the dad a lot. You know, the dad will help me a lot. Um, but Eric, you know, he's in and out different times. They got different schedules. See, I got to get out of there at 8 o'clock because I got to go to work at night, you know. He'll show up at like 9, but I'll train with his dad. His dad will help me out, and I don't get to train him as much as I used to. Let me ask you a question. When you went down to Super Training Gym, that was how long ago? Cinco de Mayo last okay. year. So that was uh, – you'd never met Mark Bell? No, I met Mark. Oh, you had? Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd never been to his gym. Okay. We had met a few times. Okay, so what's the story when a guy like him who's – a real smart guy yeah. and knows his shit and a real strong guy as Definitely. well. So will he say, God damn, Tom, try this? I mean, because you're coming from Little Bridge. They, they know everything. Mm -hmm. uh, they're experts. Their record speaks for itself. They've yeah. got a hell of a name in the, in the business, the sport. So is, is, is Mark's eye any different than, you know, the Little Bridges say or technique-wise? Yeah, yeah. And I'll take anybody's advice, you know. I mean, why not? The guy's been around the sport for how long? I'm going to listen to especially people that have been around and have proven – that they're, you know, strong. So, yeah, Mark, you know, he gives me pointers, and well, I couldn't really use them after I tore my pec, but, you know, afterwards, and he told me how to rehab. You know, he's like, you need to do this, 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 this. What was the mood when you, when you tore that pec? Because, I mean, y'all were having a good time, oh, have a good conversation, and all of a sudden, bam, and that's serious business. Yeah. Because this is, this is your passion. Yeah, well, I, I, I kind of rolled off the bench a little bit. I grabbed my pec. It felt like I got hit by lightning. And I was like, oh, fuck. This sucks. I knew I tore my pec. I didn't know... Well, I knew I'd be out for a long time, and I tore my back, but I didn't know it was that bad. I didn't know it was the tenant. Tenant's worse because yeah. you have to get surgery, and it takes at least a year, they say, to kind of recover. And uh, I was upset probably for about three minutes, and then I was drinking beer again, and we, I drank a bunch of beer. I got happy again, and uh, we ended up doing the podcast, and Jesus Christ, by the time I did the podcast, I was pretty drunk because I had been drinking so much that I had just torn my pec, so I probably had... I'd say 16 beers before we started that podcast, and then I drank about six during the podcast. <laughs> so I didn't even remember what I said on the podcast. Man, for just uh, watching your videos and listening to your talk, your attitude on life, you're, you're a glass half full guy. Oh, definitely. Not half full of beer, but, I mean, you're, you're, you're positive. <laughs> I hope it's half full of beer. Yeah. <laughs> Because a lot, a lot of people would have just... Struggled. Oh, yeah, a lot of people would have been really, really down. I mean, it's a major injury, but it happens. Shit happens, you know, and just deal with it. You know, let's have a couple of beers. Have would it have been so. uh, better if that had been a muscle tear? Or, oh, yeah. Really? Muscle tears come back a lot a lot faster. It could be a couple that, months. That's that the exact opposite to me. I never tore my pec, but it just, yeah. I hadn't put enough weight on the part to tear yeah. my pec. <laughs> but it seemed like the muscle would be harder to repair. Well, you don't have to get... I've got a torn tricep. Not, well, that's why that, this arm doesn't straighten out any further than that, but... Well, I used to try to walk like that because that's why I thought you walked. Oh, with that curved arm like that to stick out. <laughs> I was just copying people, you. People think, hey, he just doesn't straighten his arm. Yeah, right? People want to know. <laughs> that's a fucking real gimmick. I got so much calcium in my elbow. I saw the best. I saw Andrews down in Birmingham. Yeah. I saw Ella Trish out here in L.A. They both looked at it, took pictures of it, and uh, I said, man, can you get this thing to straighten out? And either, both of them, world class. And they said, dude... Well, how do you lock out your bench press? I don't. I mean, on this arm, that's a locked out bench press. <laughs> this arm, it still straightens out all the way. Yeah. So and it, and I'm not competing, so it really don't yeah, make no, a I fuck. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I say, okay, I'm benching X amount, you know, you didn't lock that right arm. You out. lock that out, Steve. Yeah. For me, that's that's what I bench. <laughs> but it's it's interesting because it's been like this so long. I just compensate on everything. It's like having an arm that's three inches shorter. Yeah. So if I'm gonna throw a straight right hand, you know, just step back three inches, I'll miss you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I know you're a wrestling fan, so I, I had something I was going to uh, uh, show you over here. It's right here on my, my dryer, on my washing machine. Hang on. Chris, can you hand me that thing? This sounds good. I'm not giving this image to you. I just want to show it to you. Holy shit. I'm going to have to get this. Gonna... All right. Tom, this right here is the WWF Intercontinental Heavyweight Wrestling Championship belt. I won that son of a bitch from... Uh, I guess I wanted it off Owen Hart. I can't remember it. But when I got you wanted it off Owen Hart, head, right? Yeah, when I got dropped on my head yeah. in uh, East Rutherford, New Jersey, at Metal Lands Arena, was paralyzed for about 60 seconds. I was watching that live. People, that was the belt that was on the line. And oh, I think shit. Warrior probably had that belt. I think Steamboat and Savage both had that belt. 
uh, Brett had that belt. Sean had it. Razor might have had it. And when I got dropped on my head and I got that belt back, I told Vince, because I had to take some time off, I said, I'm keeping that belt. I said, it means a lot to me. You can get another one made, but the belt's coming with me. And he said, okay, Steve. <laughs> no, he was real nice. He, it's his belt. He could have said yeah. no. Yeah. But anyway, uh, that's that's the damn real deal. God, damn, I don't know how old that belt thought. is, but that's a bad motherfucker. Holy shit, dude. What do you think about that? I, it's a lot heavier than I thought. Yeah. <clears throat> And, man, that thing's got some miles on it because, like I said, all the guys that drug it. How do I look? You look like a fucking champion. I feel like a champion. <laughs> Jesus. You know, I was watching that live. I think I was probably 15, 16. Yeah. We were watching it at my house, my old man's house, a bunch of us. I'm like, I think something's wrong with Steve. What the hell? What's he doing? Because I remember when you, ra- you rolled him over. Yeah. I'm like, this uh, some bitch is still going to get it, I guess. If you get back on YouTube and you watch that, I got dropped on my head and it's yeah. like a big gong went off. Wow, yeah, man. and I was like, man, I'm fucked. I can't move. But the thing about it was, I don't know if I was concussed or not. I probably, I, well, I was <laughs> definitely because in yeah. the, the footage backstage afterwards, I was shook up, I was pretty emotional. Uh, but I never panicked. And right then, I said, I said, I can't move. I said, give me some time because the stipulation of that match was it was a kiss my ass match. Yeah. If I lost, I had to kiss his ass. Yeah. And vice versa. But the the deal was the the title was on the line. I was going to supposed to win it with a Stone Cold Stunner. Obviously, I couldn't do it. Yeah. And so after I laid there for about a minute, finally, when I rolled over to my belly, I said, okay. You know, I, I told uh, Earl, I said, tell him, roll, roll up for the win. And if you if you watch that video back, I'm so paralyzed. Mm-hmm. When I try to come up, my hands don't work. So I'm on my forearms. And I'm thinking, ain't no way I'm just going to lay there and let the paramedics come get me. I'm going to yeah, face a goddamn I match. Love that shit. what you do. Yeah. And so if you watch me try to bend this knee, because the, the left leg got more nerve damage than the right leg, it takes a, an act of God for me to bend that leg, and I crawl over to him. I barely grabbed his Yeah, it was such a weird wrap up. Right? It was the worst roll-up <laughs> in the history of the business. Yeah, yeah. And then he kicked out on three, mm-hmm. which cut, was kind of another blow to the neck, and I just laid there like oh. a pile of shit. And when those referees picked me up, yeah. the three of them picked me up, and the lights were on, and I yeah. held that belt up, uh, to signal the crowd that I was okay, but there wasn't nobody home. And so that was a rough day at the office, but I thought you'd enjoy it. Oh, I fucking it. love it, man. I, I mean, this kind of stuff, that's that's what puts you over the top, too. Stuff like that, that, the Bret Hart match, I mean, yeah, it's it insane. Fun. The bleeding. Hey, you did, a, uh, you did a video on your Instagram account. It was the one where you got hit in the head with like a, it was like a one by, it was a, it was a, it was a board. Oh, it was a, a Big piece of drywall. A big piece of drywall. Yeah, yeah. But he hit you on top of the head. I thought you get you gaffed yourself because you bled from your forehead. What mm-hmm. did you do? I cut myself. Yeah, what, I cut who myself. Taught you how to make a blade. Uh, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> took my blade. So what did you use? A knife. <laughs> really? I took a knife. I actually there's another you did one. A pretty good job. There's another one where I was bleeding when I did a, a deadlift. This was a few maybe a month or two prior to that. Right. I uh, the guy hit me over the head with a baking pan. Well, I, I said, well, we got this baking pan's not going to cut me open. How am I going to bleed? Because I want to bleed. Yeah. And he goes, well, I got a knife. So he started cutting me. I should have recorded this. This is probably the best part. I should have put that out there. So he starts dragging the knife over my head and just bleeding. <laughs> and I'm like squeezing it to make more blood come out. But yeah, it's, it's made the video better, I thought. What, the next time don't squeeze, just kind of push. Like, you know, like you're trying to push up a big bench press or yeah. some water dead or something like that. You push that blood will come out. Now, hey, what, what I should have called I'm you I'm not that? encouraging you to cut your head on anymore. Uh, <laughs> Wait to my next one. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be bleeding terrible. But, it, it, but what were you thinking? It's like all of a sudden you start inserting a sharp object into your forehead and pulling. It's like, hey, what the fuck am I doing here? I wasn't thinking at all. That's probably what, what it was. Just wasn't thinking. Half the time I don't think. You know, I said, uh. I mean, I seen this on TV. I saw Steve Austin is bleeding everywhere. That was fucking my favorite when he was coming up out of that sharpshooter. There's blood coming down because originally when I was with Mark, the day I was going to bench a PR the first day, the second day I was going to deadlift a PR, and on that deadlift PR I was going to cut myself open. I said I want to, you know, how Steve Austin looked when he was coming up out of that sharpshooter and it's just blood coming on your teeth and all that. I'm like, that's how I want to look when I'm coming up when it's past my knees, just blood just squirting out, everybody's just cheering me on. That was the goal. Well, then I tore my pec tendon, and the rest was history. Well, and I didn't get to me, do it. Don't do me a favor. Let's let's not go that direction. Can you cut me open tonight? No. Okay. No, I'll hit you in the head with that belt and cut you open. Oh, God, that'd be awesome. And that's just for being late. Well, I would take it. I'd take it like a champ. What's next for you? Shit, I don't know. What do you think I should do? 
Mm, oh shit, I don't know. But I mean, you, you got you gonna uh, train for a contest or? Well, yeah. Um, how how it probably is competing for you? Because I mean, it just seems to me like in watching your interviews with uh, Mark over at yeah. training, I mean, it's just kind of something you do. But yeah, no. Uh, you know, after I got hurt, I, I haven't competed in a while. Um, you know, just mainly focused on getting stronger again, recovering. But I'm pretty much fully recovered. I could probably compete again here in the next couple months. I'll probably put something together maybe uh, May, June, you know, compete again. Who knows what could happen after that? I don't know. Hey, man. Uh, maybe get in the business. Every night. Dude, you're 34. You better do something. <laughs> you go get in the business. Maybe I better drive down to Florida tonight. A lot of times people say, okay, man, is, is Mount Rushmore pro wrestling is this. And then people throw out their goddamn names. If there's a uh, Mount Rushmore of powerlifting in, in your mind, who would uh, the, be on the Mount Rushmore powerlifting? Oh, geez. Ed Cohen. Uh, Ernie Franz. Jeez, that's tough. How many how many people are on there? Yeah, <laughs> Is it right four or five? I four. <laughs> I, definitely Ed Cohen and, and Ernie Franz were, were two of the best. And I would say, uh, God, I don't I don't know who the other two would be. God damn, did, were, did you ever, were you too young to remember Doug Furness? Yeah, well, I don't know who that is at all. Oh, my God. He got into the business uh, as in pro wrestling. It, but holy smokes, he used to be a running back for Tennessee. Yeah. And then he got into powerlifting. And I'll show you a video when we get through with the podcast. Yeah. But you talk about some wheels on him. Unbelievable dropkick. One of the best in the history of the business. I yeah. guess he competed 275. The night uh, Hatfield uh, put up 1,000, I think yeah. Dan squatted uh, 975, and I think it was 242. Or 275, I think it was 242. But anyway, he blew two, he blew 975 up yeah. like it was nobody's business. And anyway, he was one of the greatest powerlifters. Man, if you you don't know about Doug Furness? No. I'm going to give you a no in about five minutes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, would uh, would Bill Kazmaier be on there? Oh, yeah, Kazmaier for okay. sure. I mean, world's strongest man. I mean, he's, yeah, he's awesome. I, definitely him. Um, I don't know, maybe Brian Shaw now. How many world's strongest men has he won? But he's a world's strongest man. You know, Milanichev, Lillibridge. I don't know. There's tons of names out there. Uh, the Boogie Woogie Man, Jimmy Valiant. Jim you know, I think Jimmy. I <laughs> Do you know him? No, no, I don't think I've ever. I might have met Jimmy one time. There's been so many uh, times I've been hitting the head with a steel chair, and I tell my wife I forget shit all the time, and she knows she lives with me yeah. for 12 years now. But hell, I was sitting there thinking uh, a few years back, said, man, it'd be cool to meet Muhammad Ali. Yeah. And I was like, shit, I was looking at some old pictures, and there's me and Paul Orndorff, Mr. Wonderful. Oh, yeah, I remember. We're, down, we're sitting there talking to Muhammad Ali. <laughs> head with so, head, remember. Head, head with so many steel chairs, I forgot I met Muhammad yeah. Ali, the greatest of all time. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a guy in, uh, out of Tyler, Enzer, John Enzer. Yeah. He had, had a good deadlift. I think he was a buck 65, buck 81. But a long-haired guy, I was in college. It was about 83. I was living in uh, East Texas with my brother. Uh, working summer job hauling drilling mud. I see this guy coming there, and he wouldn't bench press very much. He wouldn't squat an average weight, but all of a sudden he's coming to the deadlift. That was his lift. Yeah, some and people got started, good leverages, man. Yeah, he was just deadlift like a motherfucker. And he he's, he's end up invent, inventing the ends of power suits that everybody yeah. still wears. Uh-huh. Um, but Jimmy Valiant, my friend, I met him when I was younger. When I was 18, he wanted to get me in the business. This was down in, like, Piatone, Illinois. He goes, I'm going to train your brother. And he, I don't know how old he was. I mean, he was old. He's got that long, weird hair. He's yeah. coming out to, like, New York City up. He's fucking yeah. doing the best. It was awesome. I loved it. So, do you, how many brothers you got? I got one brother, Joe. Does he lift, too? He lifts. He's all, I mean, he's got the height. He's about 6'3", six, 6'4", six, about 240, 250. What's he do? He is an uh, iron worker. Does he uh, power lift, body build? No, he just lifts weights pretty much in his basement. Works, uh, works a job, lifts weights. Just had a kid. Strong dude. Yeah, he's got the fin strength. He's a bencher. You know, they, like my dad, that's all he did was bench press. He bench pressed and did bicep curls. And he told us, that's where I got the name. Or the, the, the phrase, build the chest, fuck the rest. That was yeah. his motto. You know, big bench. That's all we need, brother. Big bench. Build the chest, fuck the rest. <laughs> <laughs> that and okay, bye. I say okay, bye all the time. I was going to ask you about that. Who invented that? Well, there's a, there was a guy, but he was uh, he's like 60 years old. And he lived down the street from me. And he was in, inducted to the Illinois State Hall of Fame as being a fan of the game. So he'd always come to all the football practices, all the, all the baseball. He'd come to everything. And he'd always talk to me all the time. He asked me, like, what time practice was. And we'd be talking on the sidewalk. And all of a sudden, we'd be mid-sentence. And he'd go, okay, bye. Put his head down just take off. Or I'd be on the phone with him mid-sentence. Okay, bye. 
So it, we just, it just became a joke between me and like my dad. And every, we just always go, okay, bye. And now I just put it after everything. That's how it just all started. That's a great tagline. Oh, it's great. I saw it's you, a great way to end everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, bye. Yeah. Uh, you had some beer koozies made with okay, bye. Oh, yeah. So what do you, you got a website you sell all your shit on? What do you do? Well, I got a, yeah, Huck Finn Power. Right now I just got, you know, beer koozies. I had shirts. I sell a lot of those. I'm going to have to get some new shirts made up uh, and just, you know, training, shit like that. So, but yeah, I love beer koozies. It's great. I didn't want business cards. I wanted beer koozies, man. So if anybody's coming to the Arnold, when is that? Mar- March 3rd? I'm, I'll be there. I'll be at uh, the Pioneer Fit booth. I'm doing a meet and drink. So the, the guys from the Pioneer Fit guys are, are building me a bar onto their booth where there'll be bar stools, beer, and you can come meet Tom Finn at 1 o'clock Saturday. March What's 3rd. Pioneer Fit guys? What is that? Uh, it's a company out of Texas. Uh, was it Coleman, Texas? Yeah. Great guy. Uh, Matt Hayden, he, uh, he owns a belt company down there. They make all these custom belts and all this shit. It's great belts. I got tons of the belts. And he's a good guy. So, so the Arnold is where? Columbus? Columbus, Ohio. Uh, next, what, are you, a, are you next a, uh, a bodybuilding fan? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, that's kind of how you start. You know, I, I looked up to like some of those bodybuilders, you know, kind of, you know, I, I like uh, pumping iron and shit like that. That was kind of, you know, motivational in the beginning. But the Arnold's turned into a hell of an event where, where just, Oh, it's huge. Like the contest, biggest... but Jesus Christ, everything just, under the sun fitness oriented is yeah, there. Everything's there. It's huge. I was there last year. I actually got to lift in the animal cage last year, which was that was crazy. I got the deadlift inside the cage. I came out to one of your songs. <laughs> the first, so I went 700, 740, 776. I don't know what I did. Three of my top deadlifts, I came out to a wrestling theme. I was drinking beer, obviously. Then everybody is just packed watching inside of this cage. So I come out to Stone Cold right off the bat. I'm chugging beer. I deadlift 700 pounds. Next thing I come out, Hulk Hogan. I'm real American. <laughs> Fucking crowd's going wild. Last one, last set, I'm chalking up. Ultimate Warrior theme song comes out. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. I'm shaking the cage, going nuts. You know, it's fucking crazy. I loved it. And it was like the greatest atmosphere ever to lift in. So that was last year. This year I'll be doing a meet and greet, meet and drink instead. Man, that's a great idea. I don't know why I never thought about that. A meet and drink. Yeah, meet and drink's the best, man. Get paid to go drink beer? I mean, I can't ask for anything more than that. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Hey, uh, <laughs> let's, let's wrap this thing up. Uh, what do you want to plug? You got your Instagram account. What is it? Huck Finn Barbell. Spelled, Huck Finn Barbell. Yeah, Huck Finn Barbell. It all started because my fir- very first meet, I wasn't like with anybody. You have to write down your team name. So everybody's got these team names and everything. Well, fuck it, I'm Huck Finn. I'm Huck Finn Barbell. This is the only team I go with. So it's kind of started like that. Then it was a joke, so I put Huck Finn Barbell as... I didn't think my Instagram would take off like it did. You know, so I go to like Las Vegas. I go, you know, everywhere. Some people kind of recognize me. They buy me beers. They're like, hey, it's Huck Finn. I'm like, no, I'm Tom Finn, but yeah, thanks. <laughs> buy me a beer. <laughs> So, yeah, Huck Finn Barbell on Instagram. And then uh, was it Tom Finn JR on uh, Twitter? Uh, just Tom Finn on uh, Facebook. All right. Yeah. Uh, what are the supplements you believe in other than a protein powder? Are you into creatine, anything like that? Uh, branched chain amino acids, uh, protein powder, whey protein, casein, Quest protein bars. I love those. You ever eat those? Yeah, yeah. I eat, I eat one of those every morning. I eat one of those every morning that I cook my eggs. That's a ritual every morning. Usually a white monster protein bar with peanut butter on top. Eight eggs, potatoes, every day. And a Miller Lite. And a Stone Cold IPA. I dig it. Anything else you want to plug? Ah, HuckFinnPower.com. And HuckFin Barbell. Find me on Instagram. I'm going to be making a lot of stupid shit. If anyone wants to see that latest video <laughs> where I took paintballs to the gut and chest and uh, I still got the bruises. Well, I heard Dan had to talk you into wearing the, eye, the eyewear. Yeah, I didn't want to wear it. Dude, if, if it is got clipped in the eye, you'd be missing an eye right now. Well, I was going to close my eyes. Well, still, if you got hit in the eye, you're done. Oh, if you close your eyes, it still could hurt? No, nah, oh, yeah, you, you'd, be, you'd have a <laughs> patch on, you'd be sitting on one. <laughs> well, thank you, Dan. I'm giving you a hit. <laughs> yeah, you use your eyewear when you fuck with the paintballs. Well, I, did, I didn't have a cup. I went and looked for a cup. I couldn't find a cup anywhere. I went to, like, Dick's Sporting Goods. There's no cups. I mean, who sells? I need a cup. I don't want to get hit in the balls. Yeah. So I couldn't find a cup anywhere, so I used a fanny pack. I put a fanny pack around my well, waist. See, at least you were smart to do that. Yeah, I didn't want to get you there. Were, you were gonna climb yeah, I didn't want that to go, you know. Yeah, well, he's been blinded in both eyes. <laughs> but, but his dick still works. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> hey, man, thanks for coming by the crib. Yeah, no problem, brother. Thanks for having me. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. All right, everybody, give me a go home. Q's time to wrap up his podcast and ride off in the sunset. I want to thank my guest, Tom Finn, for coming all the way up from Illinois to the crib here at 317 Gimmick Street in Los Angeles, California. If you want something to watch, 
Fuck YouTube. Well, you can find Tom Finn all over YouTube, as a matter of fact. But you can also go to his Instagram account, Huck Finn Barbell, and see this crazy strong motherfucker do some of the damnedest things I've ever seen in the vein of strength and crazy shit. A fun guy. He's uh, strong as shit. I think he's funny as shit. Some people hate his guts. Uh, where you fall in that damn thing is uh, up to you. But a dude just uh, living life, having fun, and being strong. I dig him the most. ProWrestlingTees.com slash Steve Austin has all the shirts that I wore while filming this last season of Broken Skull Challenge. They're available right now at ProWrestlingTees.com slash Steve Austin. And the best damn IPA on the planet is Broken Skull IPA at El Segundo Brewing Company. And if you're in California, they sell it at Whole Foods and Total Wines. If you ain't in Cali, check out InsideTheCellar.com to see if they ship to your state. And you can find everything at my website that is Steve Austin related, BrokenSkullRanch.com, including the Cold Steel Broken Skull Knife. I got to say one more thank you to all the fine sponsors of the Steve Austin Show. And that's how I'm able to do this podcast for you twice a week for free. And you can find all my sponsors at podcastone.com. Just click on the Killer Deals button at the top of the page and then click on the Steve Austin Show banner. And just a reminder that the Steve Austin Show is also a participant in the Amazon Associates program, an affiliate advertising program designed to provide a means for me to earn fees by linking to amazon.com. And you can link to Amazon at podcastone.com by clicking on the Killer Deals button at the top of the page. Hey, folks, keep listening. The 60-second AP News headlines are coming up next. Until then, my name is Steve Austin, and I will catch your ass down the road. Download new episodes of Steve Austin Unleashed every Thursday at PodcastOne.com. That's PodcastOne.com.